Inc. The Board of Appeal, <clears throat> the City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal for March 30th, 2021 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law and the executive order of Governor Baker suspending certain provisions thereof due to the ongoing public health crisis. <clears throat> this hearing of the board is being held remotely via the WebEx event platform. The hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure that the hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on screen and you will remain muted until administratively unmuted when asked to comment. As with person meetings, Comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. <clears throat> the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting will be limited by the chair as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is, those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise your hand icon in the application via the WebEx event platform. To raise your hand, click the participant information icon. From there, find your name and on the lower right hand side, you should see a hand raising icon. Click the icon and your hand will be virtually raised. Click it again and your hand should go down. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star three. Just a reminder, because sometimes it's hard, but please press star three if you're connected by telephone to raise your hands. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand on, on a particular project as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. As is our usual format, I'm just gonna take a quick roll call. Mr. Fortune. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Ehrlich. Here, 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 here. Very echoey this morning, Ms. Pollock. Yeah, um, okay. okay, Mr. Ruggiero. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ligris. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Ms. Better. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, and Mr. Kendall. Madam Chair, I'll let you know when he comes on. Thank you. And is Mr. Hampton from the BPDA on? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Um, so go ahead, Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. The first order of business, the board final arbiter, calling case BOA 970-669-798B, East 3rd Street. Name and address of the record, please. Um, Madam Chair, there are a few ways to on the call center, I mean, on the call user side. Let me just see if anyone's here for that. Um, is it Michael or Maureen Murray? Doesn't have a name. Oh, Mike Murray's here. Hold on. Okay. All right, Mike. Just made up a panelist. Um, Mike, you can unmute yourself. Hi, hi Mike. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. okay yeah, name and address for the record, please. Seven. May Michael or Maureen Murray, seven ninety eight B East Third Street. So, Mr. Murray, we see you again. Please tell us why you're here for board final arbiter. We, uh, so uh, we, when you guys gave a decision before, we changed our plans to go back 12 feet, like you asked. 
and we, we added the deck just like um, 798C has. Mm -hmm. That goes back another seven feet, the deck, and, yeah. we, added, and we have a stair. And that's what the, uh, we were asked to come back for that because the original plans, our deck was only three feet back because of the, the rear setbacks, 20 feet. We would have been right at 20 feet with the, uh, with just a stair coming out the back. Okay, Mr. Mr. Ehrlich, you did a site visit, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, we did it. This is a pre-pandemic site visit, um, and uh, and what they did now was they matched the uh, the neighbors' uh, uh, project, which is what we suggested they do. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. I second that motion. Secretary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I'm going to call the Aye. hearing tonight. Sorry. I'm going to call the hearings for 9.30. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 9.30? Address, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Address, please. 270 Dorchester Street. 269-271? That's correct. That's correct. Okay, case BOA 115-0584, 269-271 Dorchester Street. Name and address for the record, please. Patrick Mahoney with the business address of 160 Federal Street. So Mr. Mahoney, why are you requesting a deferral? We are requesting a deferral strictly for the purpose of advertising. Uh, the incorrect address was cited. The range is actually 267-269A. Okay. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Is there a second? Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. Mr. Mahoney, you have a date of uh, May 4th at 1230. Thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 930 only? Address, please. That was data. All right, I'm going to call the first case, calling BOA 116-4591, 323 Maverick Street. This is seeking to raise the existing structure and erect a three-family residential dwelling. The violations, Article 2017-5, this is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 56, insufficient parking. Article 53, Section 9, insufficient additional lot area. Article 53, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 53, Section 9, the maximum allowed height has been exceeded. Article 53, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded. And Article 53, Section 9, insufficient side yard. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair, members of the board. Uh, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with a business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of the applicants, Chris Grossman and Seth Williams, we also have Jonathan Garland, who's the architect for the proposal. Uh, as was mentioned, the proposal is to raise the existing structure and erect a new four-story residential condominium building with three condominium units on site. The particular district is a 3F2000, and our lot size is 2,438 square feet. The floor plans, and you can see in this uh, rendering, our building is on the left, the newer-looking building next to the tree. The floor plans are three units. All of the mechanicals would be contained in each unit. At the ground level, uh, there would be no basement on this building. So at ground level, uh, unit one is a accessible unit. It's a 1,072 square foot, two bedroom, two bath unit. As we go up to the second level, that's unit two. And that has, that is an 1,144 square foot, two bedroom, two bath. It has a rear deck, a front porch and egress stairs. As we go up to the third floor, uh, this would be our bi-level uh, duplex unit. Uh, total square footage is 2,438 square feet. And on the third floor, that would have open floor plan living space with a den, a half bath, front porch, rear deck with egress stairs. And then the fourth floor would also house the three bed and two bath that go along with that unit. So that unit total would be three bedrooms, two and a half baths. Um, I can go over the zoning violations uh, for the, that were mentioned. 
Uh, so we would be required to have additional lot area. It would be an additional 1,000 square feet, and we have 438 square feet. Um, FAR allowable is 1.0. We're proposing two. Uh, height for the area is three stories, 35 feet. We're proposing four stories at 39 feet. Uh, front yard uh, would be required, would be five, it would be modal. We're at two and a half. Uh, side yard, we meet it on the left side, which is three feet, and what's required is two and a half, but we have zero on the right side. And we are not creating parking spaces. Three would be required. Um, so if your side yard is zero, are you attaching then to the next building, to the abutting building? No, Madam Chair, it's just the property line. There is a decent amount of space, in, well, some space in between the buildings. Uh, property. And so how would you propose to do maintenance if you're at a zero lot line on that side? Um, so we would have to utilize, there is some space. So if you, you know, we would have to talk to our neighbor to get in there, but we do have the ability to do and they supported the project as well, but um, yeah, but, but you know the relief goes with the proposal, um, and so neighbors might change. Um, okay, so um, and there is no roof deck proposed on this. There is no roof deck. No. Okay, um, how are the plans, Miss Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Yeah, uh, Mr. Drago, so there's no basement. Is that because it's in a flood hazard district? That's correct, Mr. Ehrlich, and all of our living space will be above the base flood level. Okay, and I'm just, uh, not that it matters, I'm just curious, the existing structure that is being raised, did that have a basement? I, I believe it, I believe it did. And, uh, okay, so that was, from, that was obviously prior to the- That was prior. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. And was that a two or a three family, Mr. Drago? I believe it was a one, Madam Chair. It was a one it family. Okay. It is. Yeah, it's not. Ha it's not. Uh, it's uninhabited now. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak? In um, Madam Chair, Madam yes. Chair, Secretary here. I just want to make sure you understand that Mr. Kendall is still not on. Mr. Okay. Kendall is still on. Yes. So. Um, so basically, um, uh, Mr. Um, Councillor, you need uh, five of the six votes uh, in support of this proposal. Thank you, Madam Chair. I understand. Okay. So please um, go ahead. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lynette Ramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go to the support for this proposal. During the community process, this proposal received strong support from Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association, and we also received 32 letters of support from Aparis. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The Councilor would also like to go on the record in support. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Asabi George's office. We'd like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have three raised hands from callers. Madam Chair, Secretary here before the callers. We do have the 32 letters uh, that the mayor's office spoke of. Uh, just want to make sure that's on the record. <clears throat> All right, caller 16, you've been unmuted. Um, Hi, can you hear us? Hi, is anyone here on the call here to, whose hand is raised here to speak? Report our opposition for this project? They may be all set. I, I unmuted everyone, but I haven't heard anything. I Okay, I think they're all set, Madam Chair. I, I, I haven't, I didn't hear anything when I unmuted them. Okay, um, I just want to check in with the board uh, members um, about that zero, zero um, lock line on the right hand side. I know in the past we've um, not approved um, certain elements of a request for a variance or one of the variances requested. Um, so I just want to toss that out there and see if there's any um, 
any thoughts on that? Um, I, if we're at the point of making motions, I would make a motion to approve and uh, with design review that would include a review of the uh, lot line. Are we saying no, no lot, no, no variance on the side lot line? What is, uh, Mr. Drago? What is required? So two and a half feet would be required. We, we only have twenty-five feet. So it's two and a half feet, and they're pro proposing zero. Right. Um, so we have three on the left and, side. Hold right. on, hold on, Councillor. This we are in discussion here, um, and so they would have to rely on the good graces of their neighbors to do anything on that side property line whenever anything needed doing. Yeah. Well, I would then I would uh, make my motion to deny the variance on the right side lot line. Okay. Is there a second? I'll I'll second that motion. I'll, I'll rephrase. I'll those, yeah, I, I, can, can we, yeah. Yeah, so okay. I would make a motion to approve with BPDA design review with a proviso that there be no variance on the right side lot line. I'll second Is, that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with that proviso. Good luck. Thank you. Madam Chair, Mr. Kendall is now on. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling VOA 115 5218 22 Wordsworth Street. This is a confirmed occupant as a two family extend living space to the basement, renovate and erect a half story addition with roof deck. The violation is Article 2017. This is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 52, roof structure restriction. Article 53, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, front yards insufficient. And Article 53, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Lenz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner, Will Sheehy, uh, who was with us. Uh, Madam Chair, this is an existing, has been used and occupies a two-family dwelling for quite some time. Uh, we are proposing to maintain this as a two-family dwelling and make uh, renovations throughout the entire building with the proposal to add a half-story addition above uh, as well as extend the living space into the lower level, which would be a pertinent to Unit 1. Uh, the board may recall this was before the board recently as a proposed three-family dwelling. Uh, there was opposition to the proposal, although there is uh, significant precedent in this area for three, three families, including directly next door. Uh, the uh, property owner went back, revisited the plans, uh, and has modified those to maintain the existing two-family structure. Uh, and to make renovations within the context of the existing building. Uh, we probably can jump right to the elevations to show the changes. Uh, the existing building is there on the left, um, just to give the board some idea of what the neighborhood looks like. Uh, we probably can jump down a few more slides. While she's doing that, um, the unit sizes, uh, unit one would be almost 1,100 square feet. It's proposed as a three bedroom. Unit two would be about 1,300 square feet, also being proposed as a three bedroom. As you can see here from the front and the rear elevation, uh, the addition that's being proposed uh, is consistent with uh, two and a half story dwellings uh, in and around that neighborhood. We do show the elevation for the basement level. Uh, there is a great difference between Wadsworth Street and the back of the property. The clear ceiling height in the basement level is eight feet, six inches as shown here in the elevation. Next slide. Uh, the modifications, again, we were originally proposing this to be, uh, when it was before the board last, a uh, triple-decker style building consistent with the design of the building immediately to its uh, right, uh, which you can see here in the drawing. Uh, we did go ahead and modify that based upon concerns from that direct abutter uh, and have eliminated the roof deck above the third level. So there's only a deck that comes off of the, uh, off of the uh, half story, but above the second level. Next slide. Council, Councilor, can you speak to the basement portion of the proposal? Sure. If we can go back a couple of slides, there is a floor plan layout that shows the basement. But I was showing that elevation there that indicated the uh, height and the grade change. I think it's one more slide back. Yeah. So basement level is here. Zoom in. So we do show. Um, the finished area, uh, I'm just trying to see it on my screen as well. Uh, Colette, can, 
please zoom in a little bit so we can kind of see the layout in the basement, the proposed unit? So, so the, the bedroom that's being proposed, Madam Chair, is located in the rear portion, which is the uh, most exposed portion of that level. There is storage and utility in there as well, and that's located close to the front portion of the property. Okay. <clears throat> How are the plans, Ms. Better? The plants are um, adequate. I have a question regarding the height of the sill in the in the bedroom unit on the basement. What's the height from the ground to the sill, the window sill? Um, through the chair, my, my understanding it's building code compliant, um, but I can confirm that we're not looking for any relief on that. So the, we, we do have sufficient room. If you go to the side elevation showing the um, showing the exposure of the rear portion of the foundation. There's sufficient room to comply. I believe it's, is it 40 or 42 inches? 44 is comfortable. 40, 44, yeah. <laughs> next, next slide down shows the side elevation. Yeah, it appears from the elevation that we saw before that the rear part is almost virtually at grade, almost completely at grade. Yeah. So sufficient room to comply with the requirements. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lina Tameli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on the record in support for this proposal. Uh, during the committee process, the Office of Neighborhood Services held three various meetings for this project with the applicant addressed several of the concerns of the community and modified the proposal based on their feedback. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would like to leave this proposal at the discretion of the board. Anybody else to speak? Uh, any Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have two letters of opposition. Thank you. Anybody else to speak either in support or in opposition on this project? Madam, Madam Chair, Chair, Chair. Madam Chair, there are two raised hands, but they're from previous callers. Mr. Fortune, what's the opposition uh, uh, based on? Uh, Mr. Ehrlich, there is no comments. It just says opposition. Okay. Yes, there were um, a bunch of emails that came through um, in opposition, uh, but may I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve um, what BP data time review. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. Calling the next case, calling BOA 115-8518, 18-20 Meridian Street. This is the change to legal occupants to include a cafe, coffee shop, restaurant with takeout. The violations Article 53, Section 11, the large takeout restaurant use is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small, a business address at 51 Dobson Road. Um, Madam Chair, we're here today seeking to change the legal occupancy of the building to include a restaurant with uh, 36A takeout. Zoning subdistrict is a NS, Cambridge Shopping District, and it is a commercial building. And the only violation that we are seeking relief from is a conditional use permit for the restaurant and for the takeout use. So, Councillor, this is, uh, quote, large. Uh, can you tell us how many square feet and if you so have it's a... It's approximately 2,800 square feet. And um, can you tell us... From the basement. And can you tell us who the... what the name of the business is? Yes, it's called Kennedy Cafe. Okay. You may have seen it. There was a recent article in the Globe about it. Okay. Um, any, how are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are adequate. Is any, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on the record in support of this proposal. During the community process, there were no concerns expressed by the Avaris, and this proposal received strong support from Maverick Central Neighborhood Association and from East Boston Main Streets. Thank you. Oh, Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record in support. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, uh, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you.
Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. Um, may I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second, Joe. Uh, can I, can we? To this applicant only? Uh, yeah. The, um, with this applicant, um, the usual takeout language um, and counselor is, yes. are there grades on this or new okay. sign is proposed? New sign is proposed, but no grades. Okay. Do we need external design review? Yes, we should do BPDA design review for exterior signage. Okay, so uh, the pr provisors are approval with design review to this applicant only and the usual takeoff language. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Good luck. Calling the next case, calling BOA 113 0747, 1230 to 1264 Washington Street. This is the need of change of use from a barbershop to one personal training studio, fitness studio. The violations, Article 64, Section 18, a fitness studio is forbidden use. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Christopher Kremitsky, 1230 to 1264 Washington Street. So please tell us what you're proposing to do. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, me, Chris Kransky, and Stephen Stewart are part of 1230-1264 Washington Street Appeal. We're looking for a change of use variance to change from barbershop to fitness center. Uh, we have gone through the community review process and... No, tell us about the project. I mean, oh, oh. we'll understand about the pro Sorry. process later, but right now, I we apologize. just want to understand what you're proposing to do okay so we're, we're proposing to have a one-on-one -on -one personal training studio so basically uh, it'll be uh, by appointment only clients will come in they'll train for one hour and then they'll they'll leave so it's just a personal training studio okay and uh, what are your proposed hours of operation proposed hours are from 6 a.m. till 8 p.m. Um, and um, let's see, and that includes weekends too, or do the... Uh, for, for weekends, it'll be uh, 8 to 3 p.m., 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. Um, it'll, okay. It'll be by appointment only, so uh, it'll be just based off of when clients um, want to come in for a training session. Okay, so this wouldn't include like Zumba or any loud no, music, no, in no, other words, no. to affect the abutters. No group exercise classes. Uh, it'll just be one-on-one -on -one personal training. So if uh, one client with one trainer at a time. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support of this proposal. There is an abutters meeting held on January 28th where support was shown by the abutters and the applicant also received a letter of support from the East Berkeley Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Welcome, Madam Kim. Chair, Madam Chair, Secretary, yeah, we have two letters of support. Okay. Ms. Ambassador? Madam Chair, I have um, three raised hands. Um, let me just see if they're... Hi, Taylor Ferguson, do you have a question? Are you looking to give a comment? Uh, no, I do not. I don't know why my hand's still raised. Okay, sorry. sorry yeah, about that. Mm -hmm. Eileen Rosa, do you, would you like to give a comment on this proposal? <coughs> okay, two, your hand is raised. Would you like to give a comment on this proposal? We are all set, Madam Chair, for the raise hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion I'll make a approve. motion to approve. With the proviso for this applicant only. Okay. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hey, Joe, hey, jo, what was the proviso that you proposed? I'm sorry. This, this applicant only. Okay, thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 116-1589-55 to 59 Causeway Street. This is to erect a rooftop digital outdoor advertising device on the roof of an existing two-story commercial structure. The digital sign would be 25 feet in width and 15 feet in height. The total height of sign will be from 46 feet to nine and a half feet above the grade of Causeway Street. The violations, Article 11, Section 7, 
electronic signs, Article 11, Section 2, uh, premises, signs, and non-residential districts, Article 11, Section 6, signs subject to other regulations, billboards. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Linz on behalf of Media Vision Incorporated. Uh, with me is John, Jonathan Dominic Sarah from Media Vision. Also with me is uh, Bob Messier, who's our uh, digital outdoor advertising consultant. Uh, Madam Chair, this is a proposal to erect an outdoor advertising device, digital format, located at the corner of uh, Lancaster and Causeway Street. This is located in the Old Fix Triangle. Co uh, co excuse me, Colette, can you zoom in a little bit? Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Councillor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as you can see here, the corner of uh, Causeway and Lancaster, we do have some um, contact photos from the street as well, um, located directly across from the uh, O'Neill Federal Building in uh, down the street from uh, the TD Garden. Go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is the existing commercial structure, um, two-story. Uh, the billboard we proposed uh, on top of that uh, building there on the corner. Uh, it's intended to be directed away from the nearest residential area, which is located across, uh, diagonally across on the other side. Um, and this is also intended to be in full compliance with the regulations set forth by the Office of Outdoor Advertising uh, based with the Department of Transportation and for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Next slide. Uh, just a view back up Lancaster. This is the direction it will be facing uh, towards the O'Neill Building. Next slide. And just our zoning district, uh, Bullfinch Triangle. Next slide. I can come back to this in a moment. Uh, we'll go to the next slide showing the street rendering uh, to show it in context. Uh, next slide. So this is the uh, what, what the orientation of the board single-sided. Uh, and again, this is digital format. Uh, with respect to uh, the issues that typically arise relative to a digital format board, uh, we do have our consultant who has done the analysis with respect to compliance for digital regulations. The uh, intent here, or at least the re requirements of the regulations, is that uh, the brightness of this sign is uh, strictly regulated so that it does not have any more impact in the ambient light that is in and around the area. Um, and Councillor, I just have a couple of questions because we know we know about all the state and the city regs. But can you please tell us how close is it to the abutting building? Because that building today might be commercial or office or some sure. kind of use like that, but it could very well become residential. Sure. Um, so kind of just speak to us what the view would be from any of those windows back there. So, so part of the design of this uh, structure, Madam Chair, uh, includes louvers, which would prevent any of the light that is emanated from the board from affecting any of those uh, windows or any of those um, uh, uh, levels that are located in that building directly behind it. If we go back to the site plan, we can show the specific distance between the board uh, and that structure uh, right there. So we are proposing to locate this closest to the corner of the building at Lancaster and Causeway. There is uh, about, looks about 50 to 40 to 50 feet between the nearest edge of the sign and the building. And as I indicated, uh, the design of this uh, structure would include uh, shielding louvers, which would prevent any of the light uh, from being um, cast toward, back towards that building. So everything is, everything is facing up causeway towards the O'Neill building. And again, uh, the intention is to be in full compliance with the state regulations. We would not be able to uh, propose this structure if we could not comply with the outdoor advertising regulations for digital advertising. And there's no point at all within a 24-hour period that that uh, billboard is completely off. Um, that is correct. However, um, there there is some adjustments to um, to the intensity of the light, uh, both day and night. Um, and I can have Mr. Messi if the board. Um, no, I just, I mean, what, what I'm thinking is that, you know, the, the positive element of this is that it's essentially a commercial district, offices, you know, uh, things like that. So there is, you know, very little traffic, I assume, in the at two in the morning, well, maybe three in the morning after the bars close or whatever it is. And so that's why I was wondering if there was any off time proposed on this billboard. 
Now, now and again, consistent with state regulations, uh, the timing of the board um, has to be has to be in compliance with whatever the regulations um, state. Uh, there's certain, obviously, certain intervals for which the sign can change, uh, and then there's also um, certain amounts of time that this is dedicated to PSA. Uh, I will point out that Media Vision has uh, agreed to go over and above the requirement of the regulations to offer this to local nonprofits uh, that are in and around uh, the West End area, and I know that we do have a few of them uh, that are speaking favorably on this based upon the commitments that Media Vision has made uh, to those organizations. Okay, uh, and how, how are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Yeah, Mr. Linz, um, do you have a rendering of what the backside of the board looks like so we'll know what people in the uh, budding building will be looking at? I, I don't have the rendering, Mr. Ehrlich. Uh, we didn't show it from that, that angle. However, um, there is uh, adequate shielding that can be incorporated, uh, almost like a black mesh that can be put across the back of it so you're not necessarily looking at the superstructure itself. Okay. Yes, right. I also, oops, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I also have a question regarding um, design review. Have you had any conversations with BPDA? Um, through the chair, my experience, and I'll let Mr. Hampton speak to this, uh, my experience is the BPDA doesn't necessarily design review uh, outdoor advertising devices. There's not much we can do by way of the structure itself, but happy to uh, submit to that with respect to any design questions that come up relative my, to what could be from behind. My understanding is that electric, electronic signs are not permitted in a city other than by a conditional use granted by the zoning board. Um, and I, I'm, I know that I'm familiar with electric signs being used in the theater district or the seaport district or Lansdowne. And so this electronic sign would need to be reviewed by BPDA. Well, I, I have no, okay, no... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that comment, Ms. Better. Um, yeah, I, I, had, I had one more. I had one more question. Um, so, Mr. Lenz, you say your argument about the, the minimal impact is that it won't, it won't be facing, it won't be able to be viewed by any residential uh, unit anywhere no th there are there are residential units mr ehrlich uh that are further up causeway street however right. they are out they are outside of the minimum distance um based upon the regulations for for which this may have impact and again i do have bob Mess messier here from detronics who can speak to the uh i guess the relative intensity of the sign and then its proximity to residential areas and we've done all of the measurements and calculations to ensure that the uh, impact is fractional uh, of what the actual regulations permit, uh, so we feel that the impact is, uh, is is non-existent to the to the residential areas further up Causeway Street. Okay. And I do, and I do have an analysis of that. As, I'm sorry, I do have an analysis of that in the in the presentation. If we wanted to go to that. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in in support or in opposition of this proposal? Chair, members of the board, this is John Romano from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, this or, uh, this proposal has gone through an extensive neighborhood process. Um, the project has received support from different uh, associations in the area, such as the West End Church um, and some abutters as well, as well as this project has received opposition letters from the West End Civic Association and the Downtown North Association. Um, while we don't, while the, our office doesn't believe that this is a bad location for a board to a billboard to be put up, um, due to the proximity of residents and other ex, uh, other existing structures, we do believe, um, and we do uh, due to this, we would like to defer to the board for their judgment on this matter. Madam, they share members of the board. Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in opposition, as Councillor Flynn and Councillor Buck filed a joint opposition letter with the board due to overwhelming feedback from <laughs> neighbors and civic organizations, including the West End Civic Association, Downtown North Association, Alliance for Downtown Civic Organizations, Bay Village Neighborhood Association. Neighbors have called attention to preserving the historic nature of our downtown neighborhoods, concerned about distracted driving, pedestrian safety, that this electronic billboard will bring contrary to the city's Vision Zero Road Safety Initiative. 
and other quality of life of life issues like light pollution. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is Samantha Bennett and speaking today on behalf of City Councilor Michael Flaherty's office. Our office has heard both opposition and support for this project. However, the council would like to note that we have received letters of support for the billboard from residential direct abutters, as well as many nonprofits in the area, such as the West End House, Old West End Housing Corporation, the Italian American Museum, and others. This project will bring community benefits, such as guaranteed advertising space that these nonprofits would otherwise not have access to. That said, the council defers to the board's knowledge and wisdom for understanding and interpreting the zoning laws as they pertain to unnecessary and unintentional hardships. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support, uh, excuse me, excuse me, in opposition, echoing the sentiments of Councilor Flynn. Thank you. Thank you. May I hear from uh, Dwayne Lucia, please? Madam Chair, may I put my secretary into the record there? We have That's numerous crazy. letters of uh, opposition, and we do have letters of support as the mayor's office and the councilors have spoken. And, and, and Madam Chair, when appropriate, I would love to say a word. Madam Chair, also, this is Jeff Hampton from the BPDA. When appropriate, I'd like to speak. Uh, who was the person who previously said they'd be interested in saying a word? Uh, Councillor Kenzie Bach here from District 8. Oh, yes. Please go ahead, Councillor. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to appear today strongly in opposition to this. Um, uh, to Hansi's point, I think as many members of the board know, um, there are three places in the city where you can have electronic billboards as a conditional use. And that's the process which generates um, BPDA licensure and kind of a back and forth process of what it will look like. This is outside of that. It's a forbidden use here and the board's being asked to give a hardship. Um, and I want to just express strongly on my own behalf and on behalf of ADCO and many downtown neighborhood associations that we really feel it's incredibly important for the board not to um, sort of set a precedent of granting hardships for electronic billboards when the only hardship we can see is the opportunity um, to, to not make economic gain. Um, I'm very concerned. This is a major intersection. It's a major kind of vision zero traffic problem for me. It's really unsafe for pedestrians. And so adding an electronic billboard to the mix here um, is undesirable. Also to the chairwoman's point, this is really a neighborhood that's rapidly changing into a residential neighborhood. Um, I've got thousands of new constituents here. Um, and, and I think that, again, we worry a lot about the proliferation of this use. Um, and we think that when the city made the decision to have three very specific areas in which it would be a conditional use, that was a judicious thing. Um, and that if we start granting variances for hardship just based on the opportunity for folks to make money in other parts of the city on these electronic billboards, um, it will be very hard to draw the line anywhere. And, and we really worry about about sort of the tax on people's attention whenever they step, step out into the public realm. So from both the Vision Zero perspective um, and, and the precedent uh, and, and sort of the issue that, frankly, because it's a variance, there will not be a requirement to go to the BPDA for licensure, I would strongly, strongly ask the board to reject this application on behalf of myself and Councillor Flynn and all of those neighborhood groups that I mentioned. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hampton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. In keeping with our policy, the BPDA recommends straight denial of this proposal. Uh, echoing uh, Councillor Bach's comments about uh, any sort of limitation or licensing uh, that the BPDA would require under Article 6 of the Code for conditional uses, uh, we actually, I actually testified at Councillor Bach's hearing before the City Council, uh, and we had also mentioned to Councillor Bach and Councillor Flint that we have a proposed uh, text amendment to the Boston Zoning Code that would cover any sort of zoning variance that is issued by the ZBA in terms of an electronic billboard so that they would be subject to the same conditions uh, as would any billboard that is uh, approved under 11.7 of the code for a conditional use. Um, those conditions include an eight year limitation on the billboard, uh, hours of operation, um, uh, a license agreement with the BPDA, um, but uh, right now, the BPDA uh, would go in uh, opposition of this proposal on Causeway Street. Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Hampton, you said um, the conditions would include hours of operation. What else? Uh, so under 11.7 of the code, it would be uh, design review, 
Um, it's limited to an eight-year time period, and then the board may review this um, proposal again after eight years to make sure that the sign is in compliance. Um, but the hours right now for any of those billboards that are in the three areas where there are conditional use, they're limited in operations between 7 a.m. and 2 a.m. So they would be in sleep mode or shut off completely uh, after two in the, between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. Um, also, the you know, ISD has jurisdiction under 11.7 to make sure the content uh, you know, is appropriate, that motion and images uh, they can't be too fast or yeah. distracting or yeah, exactly. so a sign doesn't compromise public safety in any way. ISD has this under 11.7, but those are only uh, enforced if given a conditional use or I would ask that 11.7 be applicable to this billboard if the board sees uh, to approve it. But again, just uh, okay. restating well, the BPDAs. Thank you. Thank you. Because I know that we've gotten comments about the billboard at the W, um, that billboard being too bright uh, late at night, and the one that is in proximity to the new Arts Academy across from uh, Fenway Park. Um, so, okay. Um, any, uh, may I hear? Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor, thank you, Mr. Hampton. Uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Lucia. Um, I would like to, uh, I'm a resident at 150 Staniford Street, diagonally across from where the billboard is being proposed. I what is your address again? Hello? What is your address again? 150 Staniford Street. It's okay. on the corner of Causeway and, and Lamazny Way. Okay. Uh, I'm in support of this billboard. Uh, we feel it's an appropriate commercial area. There are electronic billboards at the Boston Garden that provide no community benefit, where 75,000 people a day see these billboards. And we feel that the proposal by Media Vision is uh, going to provide uh, significant public service announcements as well as community messaging. Uh, these are significant benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Can I hear from Colin, user number 11? Okay, hey, Colin. Caller 11, you've been unmuted. All right. Okay, caller 617803, would you like to leave a comment? person has had their hand raised since the beginning. I'm not sure. Okay. How about Ms. Thomas, uh, Louise Thomas? Yep. Okay, Louise, you've been unmuted? Yes. Thank you, Madam, Madam Secretary. Um, Can you state your name and address, please? Louise Thomas, 65 Martha Road. I'm also a twice past president of the West End Civic Association. <laughs> there is one thing that hasn't been addressed. I don't know if you realize that this is a historical neighborhood. And in 2004, the RF, there was an RFP for the new parcels that were freed up by the demolition of the elevated highway. And in that, and these, the RFP was supposed to model the historic part, which is where this billboard goes. And specifically it says states, that no rooftop signs or billboards would be allowed on the new parcels. Therefore, I don't believe that this is anywhere near appropriate to allow a digital billboard at this Causeway Street location, which Thank is you. the historic part of the building. Thank you. Uh, may I hear from Ms. C? What's the name? I'm sorry. Uh, Linda C. Oh, Linda C. Okay. Okay, Linda, you've been unmuted. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Madam Secretary. My name is Linda C. My address is 210 South Street. 
in Chinatown Leather District. I just wanted to point out very quickly that this is the same applicant who's been trying to put a billboard in front of my building at 42 Beach Street in Chinatown um, after being deferred four times last year in the face of strong opposition from local residents community leaders. This applicant uh, is trying to put that build, that billboard in front of my residential building and, play, and here they're saying that it won't affect them. That is just not true. From where okay. I sit right now, I can see Thank people you. So, so uh, you're, you're bringing us to date on the Chinatown issue and uh, abutting to the residents. Thank you. Mr. Jay Walsh. Mr. Walsh, can you state your name and address, please? Sure. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jay Walsh, 15 Gilmore Terrace in, uh, in West Roxbury, but on behalf of the Downtown North Association, uh, we'd like to be recorded in opposition to the application. Uh, our board, re which represents property owners and businesses in the area, met with the applicants and we voted unanimously to oppose it. And just to touch on Ms. Thomas's comments about the level of planning that went in, I believe that when the uh, Hub on Causeway project was being permitted, uh, electronic signage was included in their approvals for their planned development area. But also at the time that North Station was considered as possible fourth location for electronic signage is to be allowed by, uh, by right in, uh, in the code. But I think it was contemplated that the most appropriate location for that would be the Hub on Causeway. And that's why it was determined to include that in their PDA and not include it as one of the uh, areas for an allowed use. But with that, we'd like to go in uh, opposition. Thank you. Thank you. So given that information, may I have a motion, please? <laughs> I would like to okay. make a motion to deny. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed. I too am opposed, but the motion carries, so it's denied. Thank you, Madam Chair. Holly. Calling the next case, calling BOA 115 5307 52 Dwight Street. This is a new rear deck, roof deck for exclusive unit of unit two. The violation of Article 64, Section 9.4, balcony above the first story. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, uh, my name is Norberto Leon, and I'm the architect for the project. So tell us what's being proposed. We're proposing to. Um, build a uh, deck on the second floor of the uh, building it's uh, facing the attic i mean the um, the alleyway and the uh, deck is uh, six feet by 19 foot six and is it bracket supported it is it is bracket supported and tell us about the roof deck uh, the roof deck has been uh, granted uh, approval by Landmarks. Yes, but you still need approval for us. So tell us about oh, the uh, dimensions about the roof deck. Oh, so the roof deck is, um, sorry. Uh, if you could go to the next page, please. Okay. So it's 21 foot, 21 feet, uh, four inches by uh, 23 feet. And what's the access to that deck? There's a uh, roof hatch. It's through a hatch, okay. And it's for unit two only? Correct. Okay, how would the plans miss better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Um, you said the roof deck was approved by Landmarks. Was the rear deck approved also? The uh, <clears throat> yes, the uh, the rear deck is also approved. Um, is uh, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in um, support of this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support of this proposal. And a butters meeting was held on February 11th, where no opposition was shown by a butters, and they received a letter of support from the butters. Thank you. Madam of the Chair, members of the board, and a call from Councillor Fling's office. The councillor would like to go on recording support due to no, no issues being reported from neighbors and the A Street Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councillor Sabi George's office. Would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, Mr. Hampton, uh, BPD is recommending design review. Yes, Madam Chair, we recommend design review only on the rear decks, but if the applicant has stated that Landmarks has already approved the rear decks, we don't need to see it as well. We don't need to duplicate it. Um, so, applicant, uh, Mr. Um, um, Norberto, can you please really clarify that, in fact, it has been seen by, uh, by Landmarks? Yes, it has. Okay. Um, any other comments? Anybody else to speak in support or in opposition? Okay. A, go ahead. May I have a motion, please? I like motion. to make a mo I like to make a motion for approve approval with a proviso for BPDA to review the the roof deck and to pay specifically attention to the side setback because it's, it's built out right to the edge and looking at the google images a lot of the roof deck are set have setbacks in okay besides for setbacks is there, sorry, a yeah. is there a second second all those in favor aye aye any opposed motion carries Calling the next case, calling BOA 115-3731, to 145 Warren Avenue. This is a new rear deck, roof deck for exclusive unit number four. The violation article 64, section nine, townhouse, rural house extensions into the rear yard. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Norberto Leon and I'm the architect for the project. So Mr. Leon, give us the information on this one too. So we are also proposing a uh, rear deck uh, on the second floor and a roof deck. The uh, rear deck is uh, 31 foot five by six feet. And um, oh, those are the wrong drawings. And how about the roof deck? Uh, sorry, let me get the, the, uh, the uh, right drawings here for uh, the roof deck. Yeah, I, I, in, reviewing these, in reviewing these drawings, the roof deck was missing. Um, yeah, I don't understand how that could happen, but um, the roof deck, I can show you my screen, I can share my screen with you. No, we, we, cannot, we cannot do screen share, so if you could just give us the dimensions. Sure, the dimension um, is uh, 20, I'm sorry, 24 foot 10 inches, and it's by 35 foot 6 inches. And we do comply with the setbacks for, for landmarks, and landmarks has reviewed this. The same thing for 52 Dwight Street. Okay, so uh, just hold on. And how is this roof deck accessed? Uh, it's accessed by a roof hatch. It's okay, and it's only for it's for exclusive use of Unit Four. Correct. Okay. Um, um, I'm sorry, Madam uh, Chairman. Just going back to 52 Dwight Street because we have had. No, 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 no. We're done. We're done with 52 Dwight. I just want to make sure that everything stays clear. That we're hearing information for your applicant at 143, 145 Warren Ave. Okay, um, uh, Miss uh, Miss Better, how are the plans? Because I know you're missing the roof roof top, um, But tell us about what you're seeing. What the, the plans rest of the are. The plans are adequate. I just have a question. In order to get access to the roof deck, is it from the central stair that I see on the third floor? Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support of this proposal, and a Butters meeting was held on February 11th, where no opposition was shown by Butters. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Ana Calderon from Councilor Flynn's office. The Councilor would like to go on record in support due to no issues being reported by neighbors and the Ellis Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office. We'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands for this project. May I have a motion, please? A motion. I'd like to. I like to make a motion with a proviso for BPDA review of the roof deck, given that we don't have the drawings in front of us. May I have a second? Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Fetter, would you just want us to do the same thing that we would be doing on Dwight? You know, we have free range on setbacks from roof line and everything yes. like that? Okay, great. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 115 29 M Street. This will install a new roof deck and spiral stair access from the existing rear porch. The violation of Article 68, Section 29, roof structure restrictions. The roof structure restricted district access to the deck must be through a roof hatch, roof hatch only. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Taylor Ferguson, contractor for 29 M Street. We're seeking relief uh, with the violation in regards to the means of access by utilizing a spiral staircase in the put on top of a rear existing porch instead of um, putting in interior access from the unit. Okay. Um, so this is this is cited for it's not cited for building code relief. It's just cited for um, the structure. Is this a three family? How many units in this building? A uh, three unit building. It's a three family. Okay. How are the plans, Miss Better? Plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joe Coppinger with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Honorable position, members of the board, Ana Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in opposition due to no attendance at the abortus meeting, and Councillor Flink would like more time to allow residents an opportunity to provide feedback on this proposal. Thank you. I'm sure I have no additional raised hands for this proposal. So this is for a, uh, a roof deck. Uh, may I have a motion, please? A uh, motion to approve with BPDA. Do we need design review on this? I don't think um, so. Yeah, motion to approve. Is second. there a second? All second. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Following the next two cases, calling BOA 1123258 and 110 Buttonwood Street. It's a companion case BOA 118 Buttonwood Street. This is for 110. This is to combine 110 Buttonwood and 114 Buttonwood into a newly created single lot to be 7,600 square feet. A change of art from a three family dwelling to a multi family dwelling, eight units, construct a new addition to an existing structure and roof deck. Propose nine off street parking and two additional ancillary parking from 118 Buttonwood Street. The violations, Article 65, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling use is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the Floyd air ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 9, Section 2, a change in non-conforming use. This is for 118 Buttonwood. This is proposed two ancillary parking for 110 button one. The violation of Article 65, Section 8, ancillary parking use is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Peter is on, I just made him a panelist. Um, Peter, you should be all set. Can you hear us? Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. You've been unmuted. Peter's oh. oh, then he might be on a different. Okay. Hi, Peter. Can you hear us? Yes. Now I okay, can there you go. Thank you so much. No problem. Good morning. <laughs> yes, so um, Peter Vanco, Vanco Studio Architects, 407 Dudley Street. Uh, we are proposing um, an eight unit uh, development here um, that utilizes, it's actually via the combination of uh, 
uh, two lots, the, uh, one of which is currently a three-family dwelling and another single-family dwelling. Um, utilization of the two lots, let's quickly jump to the next page. I'm having trouble there with page control. Colette, can you please move to the next page? I, uh, yes, are we, um, Mr. Vanko, you need to speak to Colette because she has, um, she has, um, she okay. has control of it. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, to the far left on this site plan is 110 Buttonwood, 114 Buttonwood. There in the middle is a single family dwelling. And uh, we are combining these two lots into one. And 118 Buttonwood, which is also owned by my client, is also utilized in this for the sake of parking alone, and it's all connected. Um, if we can jump to the next page. So through this combination, we are actually proposing uh, for our eight units, we have 1.25 parking spaces required per dwelling unit, which we cannot satisfy. So can you please can you please back up and tell us what the zoning district is in this for, for this address? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Yes. So it is a um, it is a 2F3000. OK. <laughs> And um, tell us about the building form on the street. Is it two families? Is it three families? Is it a combo? Many three families and many, um, there's not many, but there are several six families. Kalana, if we actually go to the next page down after this, this is a good uh, diagram. It just shows leftmost diagram. The uh, white building in the middle is ours. The black lines and the outlines are basically, we're intending to mirror that structure. To the far left in that image is an existing uh, larger multifamily building. There are many projects in this district that would qualify as being MFRs. Okay. So what so is, now what is a three family? Okay, so please now tell us about the unit breakdown and then more importantly, tell us about 118 Buttonwood and what the parking requirements are for the existing three family um, and how you're going to accommodate the proposed parking for 110. Absolutely, Madam Chair. I'm calling if we can go to the next slide. So we have eight units. They are all the same. They are two bedroom, one bath units. Uh, maybe actually next slide after that. This shows the massing setting into the neighborhood. And we'll continue onward until uh, next slide. So what's the average square foot for these two bedrooms? The average square footage is um, they are around 1,250 square feet each. The average square footage, I would say, um, we have some smaller ones there, they're going to be, I'd say 1,200 square feet for two bedrooms. So they're nice large two beds. And is there any dwelling space proposed for the basement? Any dwelling space? Um, actually, Colette, if you can go to the last slide in this deck, um, it's a building section. The building appears on the outside as a three-story building. Um, as a, it's common in this district, and specifically the larger building that is to our left, uh, is a walk-up. So you basically have four or five steps to get up to the first floor. What we are doing here is we're mimicking that. But actually, if we go one more slide down um, from that, actually to our very last slide, maybe it's, um, maybe it's one up from this looking for our building section. We're actually going down into the ground, about four feet, there will be no formal basement in this building. And in that book, that residential space in the basement, what's the floor to cell height? Madam Chair, that is going to be exactly 10, it's going to be 10 feet floor to floor. So mm -hmm. it'll probably have ceilings that are eight, six or eight, eight. Mm -hmm. um, it will certainly be met with adequate light and air. 
required by code and they will have full height windows all of those things so they're okay they're feel very um, regular okay so then uh, let's go back to the parking I'm particularly concerned about the existing three family at 118 Buttonwood um, to see how their parking is being accommodated um, their required parking is being accommodated yes absolutely so 118 Madam Chair Madam Chair, Secretary, Mr. Vanko, Mr. Vanko, could you hold on two seconds? Right, Madam Chair, I just want to make sure that Mr. D'Amico was heard on this one. So you're talking about parking, so I think that might be helpful. Uh, in regards to 110 Buttonwood Street, should have at least six spaces, eight and a half by 20. Two spaces, 10 and 11, should be removed, and all spaces should be on the angle to improve access and egress. That's Mr. D'Amico from BTD. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so please, Mr. Vanko, go ahead and tell us about 118 Buttonwood. Tell us about yeah, so their, their parking requirements. Yes, 118 Buttonwood currently is without, without parking, the, uh, formal parking in the rear of the building. There's no formalized um, parking associated with that building. There's um, it's paved but there's no striping there's really not um anything that's formal so working closely with the neighborhood and you will see a support letter of course um from the civic association they liked how we were laying out our parking and that we were really working with all of these buildings to work together and that because they're actually they're co-owned 106 108 um, 110 and 118 is all co-owned by by my client and then the way that we're doing trash management, snow management, everything there in the yes. back. Yes, so the please tell us about the parking. Yeah, so basically uh, 118 has no parking associated with it currently. Okay, and tell us about that roof deck. How is it accessed? Yes, so the roof is accessed via enclosed uh, stairs and a head house. And who has access to that deck? That is a common roof deck. Okay. And you've probably heard how we're not too keen on head houses. Absolutely. I think that okay. if we go to the first slide on this uh, on this deck, that I would hope that the board would recognize that we are hiding our head house extremely, in a, in a creative way, extremely well. You actually have no perception of it from the street as a pedestrian. Okay, uh, how are the plans, Ms. Better? Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? I, I, I have a question. Uh, for the, your basement units, you do have light wells, correct? Is that what I'm seeing yeah. in the front and the rear? You do have light wells. That is correct. The front and rear do incorporate light wells. Okay. What is, what is the, uh, the floor to, uh, to grade there. I know you talked about the walk-up part, so what does that make the floor, the floor to grade? Yeah, great, great question. That floor to grade is about four feet below grade. Okay, and, on, and even though you have uh, said you're nicely hiding the head house, um, what, what, what's the problem with using a hatch instead? Um, the, the, when, the mode of um, and the controls that we talked about with the neighborhood and the ways that we were going to try to control sound, the ways that we were going to try to make it as safe as possible, um, it always led us back toward a head house and formal stairs. And I just think that the common access out of a hatch may, may, may insert some issues. I'm not quite clear what that means, but Okay. Well, ease, ease of access, um, it, you know, say like for a family who may be living here, children possibly might not be able to utilize the head house latches. It's easier to just go up a stair and go out of a door. Well, you know, it's unlikely with two bedrooms that you're going to have very many families there. Might, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's possible. Yep, okay. Um, let's see. Um, I, you know, I'd like to hear from you, uh, Ms. Better and uh, Mr. Ehrlich on that basement space. 
I mean, currently, currently, if you're in the basement, in the bedroom unit, you have to go out of an egress well to get out. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's an entire unit in the basement. It's not a bi level. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to yes, speak? Madam Chair, Secretary here. To Mr. Yes. Ehrlich's point, I just did a Google Earth uh, map, and uh, there are no there are no head houses. There are a couple of hatches that I do see in some of the existing homes. So okay. it, would, it would probably be the first couple of head houses if it is approved. Okay. And then in terms of the context, the building next to it does have um, six units, not eight as being proposed, but there you do have six units next to the property. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Fandel from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support uh, in opposition of this proposal. Uh, this did go through a full community process with a butters meeting being held last November, uh, and they did meet with and so received the support from the McCormick Civic Association. Um, there were just some outstanding concerns from direct butters who reached out to our office concerned about the unit count and overall density of the proposal. Um, the basement living space and the just existing concerns with operations um, with current tenants. Um, but with that, if the board does approve this proposal, we would just ask for continued BPDA design review. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here. We do have love in the letters of support. Okay. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands for this proposal. Okay, so given our thoughts about basement units um, and head houses, um, can we get a motion uh, that reflects our concerns on that? I'm, I'm going to make a motion to den the denial without prejudice. Uh, yeah, I'm going to second that. I'm going to second that. There, there, there's really no reason uh, to have the head houses, uh, and Mr. Vanko has been before this board often enough to know our feeling about that, and the. The uh, basement space is unconvincing, so I think it can be redesigned into uh, an acceptable so, so project. I think I think the question for us is, if if we can accommodate a motion that eliminate eliminates all the, uh, for design review that uh, and that eliminates all basement living space and eliminates the uh, roof deck, so at least then there's. Um, six dwelling units in the pipeline well I, I mean i don't know if that's what the developer wants and that's a different project than what's being proposed so i would prefer to, to make a motion denied without prejudice which would give them a chance to come back soon okay so there's, a, there's a second all those in favor aye. aye any opposed motion carries calling the next case Calling VOA 104 3326 to 3328 Washington Street. This is erect a multifamily dwelling, 43 units. The violations, Article 55, Section 19, a multifamily dwelling use is forbidden. Article 55, Section 20, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 20, the building height is excessive. Article 55, Section 20, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 55, Section 20, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 55, Section 40, our street parking is insufficient. And Article 55, Section 40, our street loading is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Is that the Exodus Bagel building right there? <laughs> yes, Madam Chair. Okay, please put your name and address on the record and tell us what's being proposed. Jessica, Is, Jessica please make Don Weist a panelist. Don, what's the name, Don? Don Weist. Well, it, it looks like it's... Uh, yeah, oh, I see it, yeah. Okay. 
All right, Dan, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Thanks very much. Don Wiest with the Dane Torby firm at 745 Lansk Avenue here in Boston. So Mr. Wiest, tell us what's being proposed. Yes, Madam Chair. This is a 43 unit multifamily residential building. Uh, if folks are familiar with the area around the Green Street T-stop in Jamaica Plain, this is the old JP Auto Glass site. There's an industrial corridor here that runs between Amory and Washington, centered on the uh, uh, the T-stop the there. It's been rapidly converting to multifamily residential. This area is also within the zone studied by the JP Rocks <coughs> uh, planning process. That plan was adopted by the BPA board. It was not enacted into zoning. So the project before you is consistent with the JP Rocks guidelines but we're here seeking zoning relief because it does not comply with the old local industrial sub-district zoning. So talk us through it, please. Um, so this is purely residential. Is there, there's no commercial being proposed. Um, tell us about, so talk us through it, please. Sure. So um, <clears throat> two interesting features to this building. On the one hand, it's, it's compliant with the JP Rocks uh, size, massing, use, uh, and affordable housing mix. Uh, it's over 20% affordable per those guidelines. The developer's uh, primary development are, uh, are relatively young, and they are design school graduates, and they've tried to create a building that looks a little bit different than the standard uh, uh, project that we see in Boston. It's got a stepped terrace along the right side as you face the building. It has outdoor spaces. That was always part of the proposal, but with the COVID pandemic, the idea of giving people the ability to work at home, be able to walk out to outdoor spaces and many of the units took on even more uh, appeal. So that's part of the design that's been enhanced. The project, uh, as I mentioned, although it, it, uh, it's it been blessed through the JP Rocks review of the BPDA, it's been approved by the BPDA, um, it does need zoning relief for uh, FAR heights, the open space for dwelling units, um, rear yard, and then because the project is within, within two short blocks, of the Green Street T, there is no parking. I should yes. also mention, Madam Chair. Yes, sorry, go sorry. ahead. No, 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 please tell us, give us more details. As you know, um, we'd like to know how far off of the zoning requirements this proposal is and the breakdown of the units and the breakdown of the units. Sure. So. In terms of zoning, why don't I address both the, the zoning compliance and the process? Uh, the zoning, because this is a local industrial subdistrict that dates from uh, several decades ago, that zoning contemplates a, an FAR of 1.0 in the building height of 35 feet. We have an FAR of just under 3 here, 2.99. We have a building height of 60 feet. Um, we also don't meet the fairly restrictive open space per dwelling unit guidelines. The rear yard is a little smaller than what is allowed. It's uh, just under seven feet rather than 20 feet. And again, there's no parking and no loading here. The project started the permitting process in January of 2019. So it was in permitting for over two years. And um, so, sorry, sorry, Gunson, can you give us then a, uh, so this is three times the FAR. Um, it's almost close to double the height. And if the rear yard is 20, you're pretty close to the abutter at, at seven feet. Can you give us the breakdown on the units, please? The number of bedrooms, the average size? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, on the subject of the abutters, before moving to the unit count, um, this project has had over 20 meetings with the abutters. Honestly, and with honestly the Councillor, I'm not, we, we, you know, please uh, use your time to just tell us about the project. Sure. So the project has two studio units. It has 17 one bedroom units. Um, and because of community feedback, looking for more flexible types of units, um, it has 12 one bedroom with dens. It has two, uh, excuse me, it has 12 uh, two bedroom units. And that is the breakdown. I can tell you we ended up with, um, it was originally designed to fit with the, the BPDA's compact living guidelines uh, proposal, but we've ended up making the unit slightly larger than that. If you want to break down by size, I should have the designer, Jenny Shen, give you those specific numbers. Uh, 
Oh, yes, please. Jenna, you're able to raise your hand and uh, provide some additional Jenna, you've been unmuted? Hi. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, the, are you looking for the square footages of all the units? The average square footage of the two studios, the one beds, the one bed plus uh, den, and the two beds. Okay, so our studio units are, um, I believe we're, we're about 50 to 100 square feet uh, larger than the compact living um, requirements. So studios are in the 500 range, one bedrooms are in the 650 plus range, um, one bed dens are in the 700s, and the uh, two bedroom units are in the 900s. So the two bedrooms are 900s, okay. Um, right. And is there any space in the proposed, any use in the basement proposed? There is. So if you're able to, um, oh, actually, you can, you can see it here. So the site slopes um, about half a story from, the, from one end to the other of the street facade, and then almost a full story uh, from front to back. Um, so there, you see the bike room entrance to the right. Um, it's going to be about a four foot uh, uh, graduated uh, ramp down to um, a semi-buried basement, which will contain the bike room, uh, storage for the residents, and a few mechanical uses. Okay. There's um, no the basement. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes. Um, uh, tell us about the rear yard. Um, so you're proposing seven feet. What does their rear abutter, what, what is their, their rear yard looking like? Uh, if, uh, if you're able to go down a couple more slides, we do have a ground floor plan. Um, this will be, I think, in two to three more slides. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, we so we do, we don't have uh, the neighbor in this plan, but um, so you see that the facade has a small kink in it. Um, so the tightest dimension is about seven feet, and the largest is um, over eleven feet. So it's it's actually because we are facing Washington Street, and the rest of the neighbors are facing uh, Glen Road. Uh, we are not imposing directly on a neighbor's building. It's their yard. Okay. How are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? So on, uh, on the uh, level one, given the fact that there was a full story variation from front to back, which I'm, I'm very familiar with the site, um, are there units in the rear of the building that are underground? They're not underground, so there is a grade change on level one where the lobby is slightly lower than the residential units, and that will meet the elevation of the street. The rest of level one will be built uh, several feet higher so that um, the level one units have windows of the same size as all of the units above. Okay. And this is an elevator building, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Any other questions from the board? Is the building, does the building have any sustainability? Like, um, are you attempting to meet Boston's carbon neutral goals? We are going to be LEED Silver certifiable. Okay, any other questions from the board? Um, yeah, the affordability, is that um, spread proportionally among the different size units? It is. Ms. Yes, this is, yeah. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Lindsay Santana from the Mayor's Office in the Neighborhood Services. The applicant has had an extensive community process. They had their public meeting on October 26, 2020 and received the support from the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council. So the mayor's office would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Justin McCleary from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. The council would also like to go on record and support and note that at 
the project's Article 80 public meeting, they received uh, very strong support from neighbors, including a number of abutters, direct abutters. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office. would like to echo the sentiments of the mayor's office and Councilor O'Malley's office and support this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have three letters of support. And Madam Chair, I do have a raised hand from Eric. Aro, Eric, you've been unmuted. Do you, would you like to speak in support of opposition for this project? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, I would like to speak in support and also highlight their exceptionally good community process. Thank you. Okay. What's your name and address, please? Uh, Eric Herrett, uh, 20 Gay Head Street, Jamaica Plain. Thank you. Given that information, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much, sir. Calling the next case, calling BOA 109 61280 10 Rockland Street. This is a two story building with four residential units, six parking spaces at ground level, and the building will be protected. The violation is Article 50, Section 43, Austri parking requirements, Article 50, Section 29, insufficient lot size, Article 50, Section 29, insufficient lot area per unit, Article 50, Section 29, insufficient lot width, Article 50, Section 29, insufficient lot frontage, Article 50, Section 29, excessive FAR, Article 50, Section 29, insufficient usable open space per unit, Article 50, Section 29, insufficient side yard setback, Article 50, Section 29, insufficient rear yard setback. Article 50, Section 44.2, conformity with an existing building alignment. And Article 50, Section 28, MFR is forbidden. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is Andrew Litchfield, 22 Alpha Road, Dorchester. So, Mr. Richfield, um, this 10 Rockland Street is a different proposal from 14 then? Yes, it is. Uh, okay, two so please. Owners, two different properties. Okay, so tell us about um, 10 Rockland, what's being proposed? Yes, uh, 10 Rockland Street is uh, <clears throat> currently a fire damage two family on the corner of Sherman and Rockland Street. We're proposing four units, uh, raising the existing structure. Um, four units, there will be three two bedroom units, one three bedroom unit, six parking spots. Um, as the property slopes down, so the um, below grade will be the parking. It'll be a lift to get up to the first floor, and the building will be two stories. And tell us again what the unit sizes are that are being proposed. Yes, so the, um, the unit sizes range from 910 square feet to 1,100 square feet. The 1,100 square foot is the three bedroom. And then uh, 910, 1030, and 1,000 square feet for the two bedroom units. Okay, now let me just see. So, um, and I noticed that um, your uh, maneuverability is off on the parking. Can you talk that through? Uh, yes, yeah. so we, we do have an existing curb cut on the Sherman Street side of the property. Um, just the way that the uh, lot isn't as deep as other lots are. That's the reason why we need the maneuverability. But you can see the, the parking arrangement on the right side of the, of the screen. Okay. Um, and then, um, so this is, so you're, raise, you're, you're raising the building and constructing a new, a few, new, new building, right? Yes, Madam yeah. Chair. The, the property's been vacant for a um, very long time, three, four years, I would say. Um, there's been multiple fires at the property, and the property is just not structurally stable. Okay. Uh, how are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Mayor, members of the board, Jason Gant from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. The project has went through complete community process and have been working with the direct abutters to alleviate their concerns. 
and we urge them to continue to do so. Uh, welcome, Jason. Um, any anybody else to speak either in support or in opposition? Madam Chair, I see no additional raised hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPDA design review. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 115 6135, 14 Rockland Street. This is a change existing two family occupancy to a four family. And a roof deck on the third story to include parking in the rear. The violations, Article 10, Section 1, parking located less than five feet from the side lot line. Article 50, Section 28, use is conditional, four feet, four feet in the 3F, 3F, 4F in a 3F district. Article 50, Section 43, our street parking is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the additional lot area is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, the usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, Secretary, I'm going to recuse myself on this matter. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board. My name is Derek Joyner, Joyner Development, um, 119B Rentham Street, Boston, Mass. And we're proposing to convert a two-family into a four-family with the roof deck and parking in the rear. We're seeking relief for the following violations. Limitation of the off street parking. Um, so, 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 Mr. Joyner, can you tell us, please, um, the types of units one bedroom, two bedrooms, the average square feet for each of the units? Sure. So, for the unit information, for unit number one, that would be a lower level unit with a walkout, it's on the downward slope. That unit consists of 1,215 square feet. That's a two bedroom with one bathroom. The floor to ceiling height is eight feet, two inches. The floor to seal height on five windows is 36 inches. One of the windows is 46 inches. The floor to grade height is four feet, seven inches. Unit two would be on the first floor. That unit is also 1,215 square feet. The ceiling height is 10 feet consists of two bedrooms, one bathroom. Unit three is on the second floor. That's also 1,215 square feet, 10 feet high ceilings, two bedrooms, two bathrooms. And unit four is on the third floor. That is uh, 800 square feet, nine and a half feet is the ceiling height. That consists of one bedroom and one bathroom. Um, the roof deck is 14. The proposed roof deck is 14 and a half by 21 and a half square feet. Um, it would create. And how, a, and how, how, sorry, how is that roof deck accessed? That would be accessed from the kitchen through a is double sliding door, and it would be exclusive use to unit number four. Okay, and then tell us how uh, parking is proposed to work. Collette, can you please go to the plan? That shows the parking layout. So we're proposing three parking spaces. The two parking spaces that are side by side um, are pretty sufficient. They both have five feet from the sideline lots. The third parking spot, which is closest to the house, that one is um, four feet away from the property line and it requires five feet. So there was the limitation of the street parking area and um, also the maneuvering area from that one particular parking spot that was created after we got feedback from the neighbors. So tell us how that, that Ma Spot. Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. D'Amico has spoken on this. Maybe you can clarify a little bit for you. Uh, in regards to uh, 14 Rockland, uh, he said reduce the number of spaces from three to two. He said remove the parking space nearest to the building, reducing the number of spaces at Rockland Street to two spaces. The, pa the spaces to be removed and one to tucked into the corner side of the home. 
Yeah, so I was going to ask you about how the maneuverability would work with that spot that's tucked in, uh, Mr. Joyner, because if the other two spaces are occupied, that third spot would be unusable then, right? True. So we can yeah. uh, we can remove that space. Um, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. How are the plans, Miss Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? I, I had a question regarding your basement unit, uh, the front bedroom. What's the sill height from the floor to the sill? Good question. So the floor to the sill on the bedroom that the window that you see is the 42 inch from floor to ceiling. That's the okay. only one that's 42 inch. All the other windows are um, 36 inches. Okay, and perfect. And we're going to propose you. another window just before the closet. Um, that doesn't show in the plan, but it will be a second window in that rear window, which will also be um, 36 inches from floor to sill. Thank you. Um, Ms. Better, I, since I don't have the benefit of seeing the plans, um, it appears that this is a sloping lot and that the rear is, is closer to grade. Is that correct? Correct. correct. It's very accessible. Okay, is it, uh, and where are the bedrooms? Are they toward the... Yeah, that's why I was asking about the front bedroom. The front bedroom was the only one that seemed that the sill was a little set a little bit higher, but... Um, is, we it were just... is it possible to shift the bedroom okay. from front to back? Well, there is a bedroom uh, proposed at the rear, which is fine. And the front, there's no problem because there's two means of egress and the f the front bedroom has uh, a window that's set at um, what did you say was well, the front bedroom uh, closest to the rear door is 36 inches from floor to sill and right. also the rear bedroom the rear bedroom we can also install another window from full, um, floor from 36 inches from floor to sill in addition to keeping the same one that's on the proposed plan yeah I don't but, see a problem I don't see a problem. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not so concerned because this is going to require window wells, right? Only, only on one window, and we will put an additional one on the um, additional window that we would propose that we would add in there. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, I'd like to go on record in support for this project. Uh, Jason Gant, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, I'd like to go on record in support of this project. They have completed the community process and also worked to alleviate some of the concerns of the direct abutters, but we urge them to continue meeting with the Mill Street Cooperative Incorporated to work on parking issues. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have one letter of opposition. Um, any comment to that opposition, uh, uh, Mr. Yes. Secretary? Yes, just opposed to the project in general, parking in general. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Ambassador? Madam uh, Chair, I have no additional hands raised here. May I have a motion? Um, I'll make a I'll motion. I'll make a motion to approve um, with the proviso that um, we eliminate that third parking spot that's in unmaneuverable and uh, with BPDA design review. Second. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1134751 45 Magnolia Street. This is a change of argument from a convent boarding house for 20 persons, daycare center 32 children, the boarding house 49 person and daycare center 32 children. Create four additional boarding rooms on the first floor. Work to include selective demo. The violations, Article 50, Section 29, additional law is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, usable open space is insufficient. And Article 9, Section 1, extension of a non-conforming use. Name and address for the record, please. Is Mr. Gibbons here? I don't 
see the name. Oh, yeah, Shane, I see him. Okay. Shane, you've been un unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Hi, Shane, can you hear us? Leah. Okay. Hi, Leah. You've been unmuted. Hi. Thank you. My name is Leah Rubega, and I'm an attorney with Hinkley Allen, located at 28 State Street. And I'm here on behalf of the applicant, which is Project Hope, the nonprofit organization that operates the um shelter at 45 magnolia sorry i'm just trying to get my screen here thank you madam chair and members of the board um as i mentioned i'm here on behalf of project hope which provides housing and related services to the low-income single mothers and their children at the building and they've been operating at this location for approximately 40 years just a little bit about the existing building it's located in the 3f 5,000 district. The total lot area is 16,297 square feet. The existing building is approximately 13,700 square feet and has three, three stories plus a basement. The building currently uses 11 bedrooms and these bedrooms are used to house anywhere from one individual to one mother and potentially up to two, two children. This building has existing shared common facilities, including bathrooms, showers, and common areas on the second and third floor, as well as a kitchen, dining room, living room, and other common areas on the first floor. There are also office spaces in relation to the operation of the shelter and a few storage areas and open common areas. Okay, so, you know, um, this, this purpose is a little confusing to me. So, um, if we start off with one be 11 bedrooms, how many bedrooms is this being proposed to be expanded to? So we're proposing four bedrooms, which it would be converting existing office space, which is approximately 2,000 square feet in the back portion of the building, into essentially four new larger bedrooms, which would okay. be completely accessible as well as an accessible lounge, kitchenette. Okay, hold on, hold on. And will the daycare center still stay at 32 children? That is something the daycare is actually in the basement and currently is not under operation. Um, but at this point, you know, I don't think there's been a decision as to whether that daycare use will be, you know, used in the future. Okay, and then tell us about the office use. So the back area is is essentially, it's currently organized as an office space, but it's being un, not used. So is there is there somebody who stays on site twenty four seven? Um, that is a good question. I, I have Christine Dixon, the executive director for Project Hope, that can speak to that. I'm sorry, what's the name? Christine Dixon. Okay, I see you. Christine, you've been unmuted? Hi, thanks. This is Christine Dixon. I'm the executive director at Project Hope. Um, yes, we have staff that are on site 24 hours a day. Okay. Um, okay, and these, these are essentially mothers and children, um, not families. The current space is for 11 families. They're, they're mothers and children. Um, as we expand this space to add four additional rooms, they'll be ADA accessible, they'll be larger spaces, and can actually take families that have um, mothers and fathers um, and that are that are that have uh, mobility issues. And these are these are real needs in the the family shelter system. So there and there, and there is no convent use. So we're eliminating the convent use. Okay, how are the plants miss better? The plants are adequate. Any questions from the board? How many uh, staff person are in this building other than the families? Christine, I'll let you answer that. Yeah, sure. Um, we have a total of about 15 staff that work in this building. Um, at, at any time, there's usually, during the day, there are about 
four staff um, at a time. At nighttime, there's there's one staff person that stays overnight. So you're looking at about about three occupants per bedroom, averaging. <laughs> The current, the current bedrooms have two to three occupants, mom and one child, mom and two children. The, the um, larger new bedrooms that we're planning to construct will be able to take three to four family members um, in, those, in those spaces. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Jason Gant with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I want to go on record in support of this project. They've completed the community process and worked with the Dub with the Dub Street Neighborhood Initiative as well as the abutters. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, the Secretary here, we have one letter of opposition, one letter of support. Okay. Any any other raised hands? Madam Chair, I have no other raised hands on my side. May I, may, Madam Chair? I, I would like just to go on the record that we submitted, I, I believe it was upwards uh, of it's okay. Uh, may I have a motion, please? <laughs> uh, mo motion to approve. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. It's not. It's not. The, it's not a battle of the letters. It's about a matter of really understanding the project from our perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Calling the next case. Calling BOA one one six zero five four zero one twenty eight Hamilton Street. This is a directed four unit new construction building. The violations Article sixty five section forty one off street parking is insufficient. Article sixty five section eight a four unit dwelling unit is forbidden use. Article sixty five section nine. The lot size to erect the building is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, lot width is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the floor to area ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the height requirement is excessive, two and a half stories is the max. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 65, the side yard is, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the lot crunching is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, good morning, Madam Chair and fellow um, members. My name is Anthony Jean Baptiste. Residence is 191 Franklin Street in Quincy. Um, I want to say thank you. Um, in regards to the plan, I'm going to defer to um, my architect. His name is Eric, and he will go over the proposed plans. And if you guys have any questions, you can ask him directly in regards to the plans. Thank you. So if you want to scroll down, we can um, show the, the property in, in uh, context. Eric, can you put your name and address on the record in the meantime? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Eric Zagerson, context. Uh, I am an architect uh, based in Charlestown, and my address is 1 Ludlow Street. Okay. Colette, can you scroll down a little bit, please, so we get a sense of what's being proposed? In the meantime, please talk to us and tell us how these yeah. four units are being accommodated on site. So the the, the ground level would have uh, one um, ADA accessible uh, barrier free unit uh, that you see in, in front of you there, and then uh, four parking spaces. And then up above, and and I mentioned the barrier free because that was a request of the neighborhood uh, that it be. Uh, not just group one but but be a legitimately accessible unit and then and, uh, and, and so let me ask you is this in a basement is it what's the floor to ceiling this is, height Go this, ahead. Is the, this is the first floor and it, the is floor to, yeah okay. the floor to ceiling would be about um about nine feet maybe eight ten okay so let's go to the other the other units and then on the second floor uh we have two units uh a two bedroom in the in the rear and a one bedroom in the front and then on the top floor, we have a three bedroom unit. So it's two, two bedrooms, one, one, and two, and one, three. Okay. One, three. Um, so let's see. How are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? 
Um, can you, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Eric, uh, tell us, this is a proposed four family dwelling. Uh, what's the general, um, you know, what, what, what is the general building form in that neighborhood? Is it four families? Is it three? Is it two? It's not four families. Um, I think Tony would be able to speak to that a little bit better. I believe there are a couple of other, a couple of triple deckers that we tried to mimic in, in form uh, okay. on the street. Um, and there are some larger buildings uh, as you um, approach the, the intersection. And tell us about the um, roof deck. The roof deck would be exclusive uh, to the upper unit and access via hatch. It's access via hatch, okay. Um, and so the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Denise DeSantos here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record and support this project. The applicant has met with the Butters and Neighborhood Associations on multiple occasions over the past year and has been attentive to the neighbors' suggestions. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joe McEachern, City Council, and Frank Baker's office. We'd like to go on record and support as well. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Chair, Secretary, Madam Chair, Secretary, we have one letter of support. Okay, and this is Hamilton Street. Okay, um, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion to approve with a proviso of BTD review. I find that the 10 foot access is um, very minimum without the side setback. So it's d des a design review by the BRA BTD. And, and BTD. Correct. That this is a new construction on a vacant lot. So uh, BTD and, um, okay, is there a second? Second, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. On your next case, calling BOA 112 4646, 419 to 429 Bowdoin Street. This is a change of occupants from market to cafe. The violations, Article 65, Section 15. Cafe would take out number 36, 36A. Name and address for the record, please. Hi. Is Mr. Pacheco on? Yes. Please put your name and address on the record and tell us what you're proposing to do. Yeah. Excuse me, my daughter is going to trust me. Okay, thank you. Please put your name and address on the record. Okay, what do right now? Just tell us. Oh, um, Israel Pacheco, 421 Baldwin, Baldwin Street. Okay. And so, you, what kind of, what's the, uh, what's the name of the restaurant that you're proposing? A, a sandwich shop. Okay, and does your dad have experience with running takeout? Does he, does he have other stores? No. 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 This is the first one. Okay. Yes. Um, how are the plans, Mrs. Better? The plans. The plans are um, are adequate. Okay. Any questions from the board? Well, it looks like there are grades. Okay. Yes. I, I was gonna make a recommendation if it's possible to remove those grates. Yeah, we'll get to that. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Denise DeSantos from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record and support this project. The applicant has met with the Butters and Neighborhood Associations. Their only concern was parking, which has been an issue in this area for a while now. Thank you. And, and should this be approved, can we ask the Office of Neighborhood Services to work very closely with this applicant to make sure that um, any provisos are met, okay? Because we do want to see diversity in, in restaurants and restaurant operators and the types of restaurant. 
However, we do need to make sure that there is a clear understanding of what the expectation is about takeout. Okay? Didn't, didn't, just uh, one question, Madam Chair. Um, <laughs> and I guess that's the neighborhood services. Um, is this a Main Street? Is there a Main Street district there or not? Yeah. Yes, there's a Main Street. Okay. Yes. Maybe we can hook up the, the applicant with them for okay. signing up and and stuff. Any anybody else to speak in support or in opposition? Madam Chair, Joe McGarren, City Council, Frank Baker's office. Um, we'd like to just make a note that if the applicant could continue to do some reach out with the neighborhood, some folks feel as though they weren't included in the process. Um, we just wanted to kind of bring that to uh, their attention and encourage them to keep working with people in the community. Okay. Okay. I have no additional raised hands on my side. Okay, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion for approval with BPDA design reviews to pay specifically attention to issues of accessibility at the entry and for exterior on the grate. And the usual screening and buffering, I mean, the usual takeout language. That's correct. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Um, we're going to listen to the next case and then we will take a five minute, a 10 minute break, okay? Calling the next case, calling BOA 1160191 2 to 4 Denver Street. This is illegalizing existing two family into a three family. The violations, Article 65, Section 41. Our street parking is insufficient. Article 65, Section 8, a three family dwelling use is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive, and Article 65, Section 9, the height is excessive. Two and a half stories is the maximum allowed. Name and address for the record, please. Patrick Mahoney with the business address of 160 Federal Street, representing Sean McGann, the homeowner. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to recuse myself from this. Okay, so this is Joe Ruggiero uh, recusing. Tell us, please, what's being proposed. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, what we have today is uh, my, Sean McGann, my client, the owner-occupant of 2 Denver Street, uh, purchased a, a building which is a, two, a legal two-family. And at the time, it was fitted out, it, it was built out prior to him purchasing it as a three-family. And he is, uh, which he discovered upon a refinance about nine months ago. So he is a uh, in the process of confirming occupancy, we received a refusal letter and he's now repealing, appealing the re refusal letter to correct occupancy from a two family to a three family. So tell us where the proposed unit is going to be located. The proposed unit is on the third floor, which is owed to the height violation. It's a two and a half story height district in a article 65 2F sub district. And specifically because the living space exceeds more than 50% of the floor area below, that is the height violation. It's a story violation. There is so no- So tell us about the floor to ceiling height and what is the uh, proposed square footage of that unit? Certainly, so the proposed square footage is 904 feet. It is a one bedroom unit, one bathroom. The ceiling height in the middle part of the floor plate is nine foot three, and it tapers down to seven foot 10 in the eve type space where okay. there's okay. transitions and is there any occupancy in the basement there is not there is no living space in the basement madam chair at all okay how are the plans miss better the plans are adequate any questions from the board is any, is anybody here to be Anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Fandel, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, the applicant notified his neighbors and met with the St. Mark Civic Association. Uh, no concerns are raised. Um, we'd like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachran, City Council, Frank Baker's office, we'd like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, Secretary, here we have one letter of support. Madam Chair, I do have a raised hand by Christopher Cardoso. Hi, Chris, are you looking to speak to the support opposition of this project? 
Okay, he, he lowered his hand, I'm sorry. May I have a motion, please? Motion, motion. to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Uh, the meeting is now adjourned for 10 minutes. In the meantime, if, uh, please, the next project at 1732 River Street, please get prepared. We will.
seen that and I don't see him. So I will ask Stephanie to give him a call. Okay. Um, so with that information, uh, just to remind any applicants here that this is a six member board. So you would need five members to be in support of your approval of your pr proposal. Um, Mr. Fortune, please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calling your next case, calling VOA 114176, 1732 River Street. This is extension of residential living space from two to four dwelling units and from, from two existing stores to one store, one hair salon, and fully renovate. The violation of Article 67, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling unit four is forbidden use. Article 67, Section 32, off street parking is insufficient. Article 67, Section 8, the hair salon and residential subdistrict is a forbidden use. Article 67, Section 9, the location of the main entrance to the dwelling unit must face the front lot line. Article 67, Section Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. And Article 67, Section 9, the lot area for additional units is insufficient. Name an address for the records, please. Uh, Tim Johnson, architect, 599 East Broadway. Uh, Mr. Fortune, that was an incorrect description. You know what? I apologize. I just called it the wrong record. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Johnson. Uh, well, since you've called it on the record, maybe we just go to Washington Street. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've already approved that one. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. No, we didn't. Uh, I'm sorry. So River Street. Uh, sorry. I did call the right number, but I'm going to do it all over again. Case BOA 1140176, 1732 River Street. This is on a vacant land erected three-story, four-unit residential building with garage in front and rear roof decks. The violations, Article 69, Section 29, allow street parking and loading, uh, requiring eight space to propose five. The violations, Article 69, Section 8, the four filming use is forbidden. Article 69, Section 30.1, the conformity of the existing building alignment. Article 69, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 69, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 69, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 69, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 69, Section 9, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 69, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 69, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tim Johnson, architect, 599 East Broadway. Madam Chair, members of the board, on a vacant parcel in a 2F5000 subdistrict, my clients are proposing to erect a three-story, four-unit building with a 10-car garage. Uh, each unit will have front or rear balcony, and the top units will have dedicated roof decks via headhouses. The unit breakdown is as follows. At the ground level will be the entry foyer and the entrance to the garage, 10 car garage via an existing curb cut. At the second floor, we have two duplex units at two bedroom units at 1400 square foot each. And at the third floor, we have two units, two bedroom units at 1200 square feet. At our virtual neighborhood meeting, was attended by approximately four to five neighbors. Uh, we have support from our director butters at 1728 and 1736 River Street. The only concern from the abutters was the rear abutter asked for the head house to be enlarged to block his view. I'm sorry, he asked for it to be enlarged? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, to block his view of the roof decks. I see, I see, okay. Um, and as I look at these violations, these are a lot of violations. Tell us about the rear yard. There's a couple of things, the rear yard um, a requirement and what is being proposed. And um, let's see, the other thing is, um, I'm forgetting what the other thing is, so please go ahead on this one. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am, Chair. Uh, the rear yard required is 40 feet. Uh, we are at 10 feet. Uh, this was incorrectly noted at 8.3. We are at 10 feet at the garage level, and then at the second and third floor, we pull in to 16 feet from the rear uh, 
as you can see in the uh, building section here, we're at 16 feet at the second and third floors, which the rear butters were very uh, happy about. Okay, and can you tell us about the circulation in the garage? How is that proposed? Well, we are utilizing an existing curb cut, and uh, if you want to go to the garage floor plan, or shall we? Thank you. So, uh, we have five standard spaces, Madam Chair, and five tandem spaces. We are proposing uh, five vertical lifts for the autos. Uh, therefore, we have a 13-foot floor-to-floor -floor from the ground to the second floor. And you can see the uh, rear of the garage are the lower areas, which are media rooms for the units above. And um, is this an elevator building? In, in other words, any of these units accessible, handicapped accessible? I uh, know, Madam Chair. The um, duplex units, which are the units one and two at the second floor, uh, these are townhouses and 521 CMR, CMR exempts townhouses from the accessibility code. Okay. How are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Um, yeah, why, why are there head houses to access the uh, roof decks? We initially, uh, Mr. Ehrlich, our head houses had a footprint of six foot by 12 foot uh, for two spiral stairs coming up into pure circulation uh, in the center of the roof. They were visually minimal. However, the, a butter in the rear felt that they could see, still see the roof deck, so they asked us to expand it the length or the width of the uh, head houses, sir. In order to block the view of the abutter? You know, in order for the abutter not to see the roof deck. Yeah, that's what I said. Yes, sir. But um, knowing the feeling of the head houses uh, with the board, we have uh, no problem uh, replacing those with hatches and then moving the roof decks further from the rear away from the abutter. Could we, could we see a uh, plan of the roof deck? And, and, who, and who has access to that roof deck? It would only be the top units, Madam Chair. These would be dedicated roof decks. Okay. So, so you can, we submitted revised plans showing this enlarged roof de, um, headhouse, Mr. Ehrlich, uh, per the abutter's request. So what you're suggesting is a possibility it would be replace that with a hatch and then move the roof decks forward? I think that would um, totally... Uh, Sentenced by the abutter? Yeah, I think so, Mr. Ehrlich. Okay. Okay. Madam, Any, Chair, Madam Chair, Secretary, just for the record, uh, Mr. Kindell has been listening in on this case. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Uh, so do we do have a full board then. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Carpenter with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. Uh, the applicants were able to receive support from the abutters. Um, uh, we have no further concerns at this time. We'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have one letter of opposition. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with the design proviso of no, of turning the head house to a roof hatch. And moving the roof deck forward. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you can do BPDA review for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah I, I, I doubt that you can actually see it from that far away, but you would have to do some sectional analysis for that. But absolutely remove the head houses. Yes. Absolutely correct. Okay. Those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Calling the next case, calling VOA 114 6931 3936 Washington Street. This is an extension of residential living space and two to four family dwelling unit and existing two stores to one store, one hair salon, and fully renovate. The violations, Article 67, Section 8, multifamily dwelling unit four is forbidden use. Article 67, Section 32, off-street parking is insufficient. 
Article 67, Section 8, a hair salon in a residential subdistrict is forbidden use. Article 67, Section 9, the location of the main entrance dwelling must face the front lot line. Article 67, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 67, rear yard is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. And Article 67, Section 9, the lot to air for additional units is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Oh, sorry, Kyle Smith is here. One second. Uh, okay. All right, Kyle, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is Kyle Smith with KDS Law, a business address of 359 Newbury Street in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, also on this call, as well as the, project, the current owner of the parcel, uh, the proposed builders, and the project designer. So tell us what's being proposed. Uh, Madam Chair, there is currently a structure which is on the plans presented before you. Uh, the current structure consists of roughly the same intended footprint uh, with two commercial spaces on the first floor. Uh, of note is that this building fronts on both Washington and also on Claxton Street. So the front half, as we've defined it on Washington Street, is a commercial unit. The rear half is the subject uh, salon. And there are two current residential units that are situated on the front half of the parcel closest to Washington Street on the second and third floor. Uh, there is currently a curb cut on the left side of the parcel uh, and the building as it's situated on Washington Street which provides for about two parking spaces. The intended project is to uh, slightly draw forward the building on Washington Street by a few feet, uh, and then over the existing footprint in the rear, which is currently only a single story, to build both a second and third story to provide for uh, two additional uh, residential dwelling units. Uh, the building footprint will be expanded only uh, forward towards Washington Street a few feet, to bring it more in line with other similar situated structures on Washington Street and a slight addition laterally to the left to the rear of the structure. So essentially taking the building from two residential units on the first floor, two residential units in the front half of the building on the second and third floor to then build two additional residential dwelling units. Uh, the third floor of the current structure would be removed, building a third floor with a flat roof uh, all units are proposed to be two beds, two baths of approximately 750 to 750 square feet. Two beds, two baths. Um, yes, and so um, I'm actually kind of familiar with this building. Um, yes, can you tell us about the hair salon and where that is proposed to be? Yes, so the current hair salon is the second commercial unit uh, which fronts on Claxton Street. So if you're standing on Washington, it is the second unit, uh, commercial unit running away from Washington Street. Um, as I understand it, that has been an existing use since 2010. Uh, we do have a certificate of occupancy from 2007 evidencing acceptability for commercial use for a store, which is arguably for the market identified on the plans before you. So to answer your question, to reiterate, the hair salon is an existing use that has been in existing use since 2010, as I understand it. And the intent is to have the current tenants remain. Okay, and I'm thinking that um, this is going to, okay. And these, both these commercial spaces have grates on them. Um, and, um, okay. How are the plans? Oh, so so I this is the one I was curious about. We we talked about the location of the main entrance of the dwelling unit must face the front lot line. Um, sure, sure. Tell us how that is supposed to lay out. Got it. So on your screen on page A dash two zero, um, number three gives you a perfect perspective. So. It is intended that units 2A and 3A, which are the units closest to Washington Street uh, on the second and third floor, they will have a main entrance that abuts Washington, which is number one on the page that you were looking at. It is then intended that units 2B and 3B, which will be the rear units off of Washington Street, will have a main entrance that fronts on Claxton Street. 
So we have frontage on two streets. So technically, our main entrances are all on main streets, but not on the front lot line as it has been defined by ISD. And you said that each of these two bedrooms was 750 square feet? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, units 2A and 3A, which are the ones closest to Washington, are 760 square feet approximately. Uh, units 3, 2B and 3B, which are the rear units on the second and third floor facing off of, water, or off of Washington, are approximately 750 square feet. Okay, because I am looking at some of the proposals that we've approved today, and the two bedrooms have come in at 900 plus square feet. Um, just to give you an indication, uh, 900 to 1,000, uh, even we had one bedroom on, on Denver Street just now that came in with a one bedroom payment at 904 square feet. Um, so, you know, we need, you need to really think about whether those are two bedrooms really, or if that's just in, us, in essence a one bedroom. In the meantime, how are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are adequate. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joe Carpenter with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. We, uh, we held a community meeting back on January 25th. Um, we heard no concerns from the community and I uh, believe this is a viable project for the neighborhood. Uh, therefore, we'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, um, so uh, may I just ask of the applicant, are you going to intend to go ahead as one as, I mean, I guess your option is to go ahead with four dwelling units at all of them at one bedrooms or, um, or you know, come, chunk, come down to uh, a smaller number of units. Um, Madam Chair, if I could ask a qualifying question. No. Um, are you suggesting that we reduce the number of dwelling units or reduce reduce the number of bedrooms per dwelling unit? Uh, reduce the number of uh, you have two choices, I suppose. Reduce the number of bedrooms per dwelling unit, or if you're um, really you know dedicated to having two bedrooms, um, reduce the number of units or a combination. Is, is the Madam Chair's concern about density on this site? No, because, you know, as, as I look at um, the projects we've, we've approved today, we've approved uh, two bedrooms at 1,072 square feet. We've approved uh, two bedrooms at 1,250 square feet. Um, and so this is, this is woefully sh short, uh, two bedrooms at 900 square feet. Um, and so, you know, we just want to be honest uh, about what we're talking about as two bedrooms, a two bedroom at, on Rockland Street at 1215. So, um, so, so just to give you a perspective of what we've seen today and how this is really small in comparison to, to, um, to what we've seen. So, Madam Chair, it's, it's a difficult question to answer right before you without having been able to consult with, with my okay, clients. How, about, how um, about we hold off on this while you confer and we move on to the next project, okay? And Madam Chair, if I can just, you know, the, the BPDA's um, two bedroom sizing is approximately 750 square feet, so we do align with that. I would also note that the existing dwelling units on site are the same two beds of the same size, if not smaller. Um, so, uh, uh, can you hold on, uh, Jeff? Can yeah. you um, can you pipe in, please? Because um, you know this this is um, this part of Washington, um, you know, could could use some longer term occupancy uh, rather than have um, the short term turnover um, that that a small unit will will um, create. I understand and. Um, 
you know, I, I don't know really what to say. This was one of those cases, uh, Madam Chair, where we didn't even get a refusal letter from ISD or any sort of plans. So this is my first time seeing this. Okay. Um, so I, I'd be hesitant to answer anything in terms of the size of this right now without having anything from the city to base any judgment on. Okay. Um, so, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, you know, um, um, the rest of the board, you know, t uh, tell me, tell me what you think. Um, the, um, from my perspective, these units seem a little undersized, but not, uh, but not out of the norm, for better or for worse. Yeah, I, I think nine fifty is okay for a two bedroom. So. Not Nine fifty, because this is seven fifty. Did you say nine fifty or seven fifty? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It said he oh. said seven fifty. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you know, uh, Mr. Smith, you're welcome to take a break, and we can move on to the next project and come back to you while you, um, you know, discuss with the property owner what what you're thinking. Okay. All right, I will uh, post back into the chat when I've had a chance to communicate with the client. Okay, thank you. Cheers, ma'am. Um, Mr. Um, Fortune. So, Madam Chair, how are we going to handle it? Am I going to call this back into the record? Yeah, uh, we'll just call the address and the BOA number back into the record, but we can go ahead with uh, the next project on Walk Hill. Okay. Calling the next case, calling BOA. Sorry. One one two five six five seven forty nine A Walk Hill Street. This directed three unit dwelling with three off street parking spaces. The violations Article fifty five section eight a three F and a one F zone. Use is forbidden. Article fifty five section forty point five D parking spaces sizes. Article fifty five section nine lot width is insufficient. Article fifty five section nine lot frontage is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 55, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, front yard is insufficient. And Article 55, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. John Moran, Alpine Advisory Services, with the mailing address of 130 Beach Road, Orleans, Mass. Good afternoon. Uh, what we are proposing is to erect in a 1F4000 zone district, a three unit dwelling, which we would suggest complements the existing neighborhood fabric in the immediate area, consisting of three and two unit dwellings. Uh, the lots in the area are generally undersized. Uh, so the issue, uh, if I may, uh, first, describe the proposed building, which would have no habitation in the basement. Units one and two would be two beds, two baths, with each size at 1,186 square feet. Uh, the third unit also would be a two bed, two bath, uh, with 1,101 square feet. Again, only storage, no habitation in the basement. Uh, we so um, I'm a little confused. Um, where is the A coming from? Was this a subdivision of a property? No, this is. These were two separate lots. Uh, they are in common ownership. Uh, it is not a subdivision. Okay. Um, and uh, tell us, um, Kate. Tell us about how uh, the circulation will work on the parking. The the existing access to 49, I, I wish to note that both 49 and 49A are in common ownership. The existing access is from the, the existing curb cut at 49A. Uh, it is being maintained by continuing on to the rear of 49A to 49 to maintain their parking spaces. Uh, we are proposing three parking spaces for 49A. There is a fourth parking space which straddles the property lines. Uh, it's shown if we can go back down, go back up to the prior map here, please. Uh, 
it it shows a fourth parking space which straddles the property lines be, between 49 and 49A, uh, which would be utilized by 49. Uh, in the event there was a separation of ownership, appropriate easements would be granted by 49A for use of the driveway and access to 49A across to 49 across 49A and the use of the fourth parking space which straddles the property line to be used by 49 to maintain three uh, parking spaces to the rear of 49. Okay. Um, Ms. Metter, how are the plans? The plans are adequate. Can we see a rendering of the, the proposed project? In the meantime, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Lindsay Santana from the Office of Neighborhood Services, and a butters meeting was held on November 19, 2020, where the neighbors were supportive of this proposal. The applicant also received the support from the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council, so the mayor's office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Justin McClary from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. The council would also like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I do have two letters of support. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve BPBA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Calling the next case, calling BOA 115-7140, 1580 to 1582 Center Street. Oh, sorry. I missed one. I think you're good. Yeah, no, I, I caught, I put my records away. Hold on two seconds here. This is a, a change of auction from, from two to a three family dwelling. Violation of Article 67, Section 32, off street parking is insufficient. Article 67, Section 8, a three family. It's a bid use in a 2F5000 subdistrict. Article 67, Section 9, the required lot for a three family. Existing lot is 3,622. The viola violation of Article 67, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, Thomas Conniff. Uh, I, I own the property, but I live in Northborough, 17 Fay Lane, Northborough, Mass. Okay, so tell us what's being proposed for 1580 Center Street. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so to give you just a brief history, about 10 years ago, I wanted to do this project, um, and I put in for permits to renovate the attic and add a bathroom, and I did that in 2010. And at that point, um, I had a contractor who said he could turn it into a three-family, and after all the work was done, he said, you need to get zoning and all this stuff. Uh, he didn't explain that to me in the beginning. So uh, I went down to the zoning department and they said, uh, no, uh, it won't get approved. So I, I never, I've been trying to rent it uh, for the last 10 years as a two floor apartment, which has been really challenging because it's, it's bigger than my home home. It's, it's too big. Um, long story short is, uh, then someone told me, well, did you appeal on it? And I didn't realize it. So I wanted to talk about what the project is. Um, I'm not looking to change anything with the exception of, uh, if you look on the third drawing, if you want me to take control of the mouse, can, everything can, exists can, as is. Hold on, hold on. Can you turn your, your picture on and um, the, the, um, the, the drawings are controlled by Colette, so tell her which drawing you need to get to. Um, turn my picture on. I, I oh, just, sorry. Yeah, I'm, video. I just yep, see sorry. video. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. No, sorry. Very articulate so, uh, at the end of the day. Okay. No, I understand. Okay. So if you look at the, um, the drawing that's up on the screen. Yes. It says, um, third floor plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through how someone today, there's no change to anything really, except for this one piece. So when you enter the home, 
there's uh, two doors in the front and there's a walkway up here on the first drawing that goes up to the second floor landing, which is on the second picture. If you look um, on the left, there's a door that goes into a hallway. But if you look on the right of the landing on the second floor, there's a door and it goes up to another landing, which is the third picture over here at the far right. Okay, so we have a, quite a few questions for you. Sure. What's the proposed floor to ceiling height in that attic space? So um, the living space is already approved, but it's they're seven foot ceilings. So if I'm if I'm looking at this third drawing here, I see a dotted line going from front to back of the building. Um, what is the height? between the dotted lines and then uh, the height from the dotted line. You mean like the under the eaves area? Yes. Where it's slopey? I'd yeah. probably say about five foot five. Five foot five, okay. Yeah, because I have to crouch a little bit. I'm five foot six, five foot seven, and I have to crouch a little bit um, okay. when I go in to the edge, but. Um, you said the height is seven feet? Yeah, within the unit finished. It's okay. eight, eight something before it was finished and the plan shows seven feet. Yeah. So you need seven foot six height ceilings for a, th a three family. Um, I could, again, I'm just. Well, this project's it? already done, Mr. Khan, if I'm not correct. It, it may not correct. It's already been, yeah, it's already been built. This is, this was done 10 years ago. Yeah. Well, the problem is then it's just not done right and in good conscience. Uh, we cannot kind of look the other way when there's uh, building code violations. Um, so the, the ISD approved the permits and everything for finishing the space. Yeah, well. Um, can I just see, it might be eight foot eight. Let me just one minute. Let's so down further can, for the plan. Can you, can you, can you hold on? Um, Miss, Miss Better, can you kind of, you, you've, you've looked at the plans. Yep. Can you just tell us if this is workable because my sense is, is that it might not be, but you know, I, I defer to you as the um, architect. Yeah, I mean, so um, so basically you need seven foot six for a three family. If it was a single or two family, you can have seven foot ceilings. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. It says here in the plan, if you look here, um, seven, six. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Kenneth, so I, saw, I saw that in your section. So, yeah. so I saw in your section that you had seven foot six and I just needed confirmation of that. Um, and I, so your bedrooms, you have about half your bedrooms would be, would fall within the seven foot six if the section is accurate. And then the other half is less than seven foot six, which I think is okay. But you need to confirm that your ceiling height is indeed seven foot six for a three family. Can I make a suggestion? Why don't we just, when, what, if we go ahead and approve the zoning relief, just have a proviso there's no building code relief. Yeah, we could do that. In the meantime though, I do have to ask you, I'm looking at Google Maps and it looks like um, there could be some uh, maintenance of the property so that you're a good neighbor. I know you might be. That's, that's old. I can send you some new pictures. We repainted the house trim. It looks beautiful last summer. Okay. So now it's slate blue with white and red trim. Okay. It looks like um, a brand new house. And we okay. put on a new porch. Hold on, hold on. So let me just go. So this is three family. Okay. Um, is anybody, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Carpenter with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I would like to go on record in support of this proposal. At the abutters meeting, um, Tom was able to receive a, a plethora of support from direct abutters. Um, he also presented in front of the Longfellow Area Neighborhood Association, ultimately receiving a letter of non-opposition, which is the board's highest level of support that they give out to proposals. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Peter Favorito from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. Uh, the council would like to go on record in support of this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam, Chair, sec Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have three letters of opposition. And is there a specific reason for the opposition? Uh, two family go to a three family. Yep. Okay. No raised hands. 
Okay. Madam Chair, it could be possible that ISD when approved, it was two family because seven foot is acceptable. Yes, um, because I'm afraid that if we say no uh, building code relief, since the unit's already there, there's no incentive for the applicant to get it completely, um, uh, completely um, legalized. Um, so anyway, I'm going to rely on you. Uh, what do you uh, think um, as the architect, um, Mr. Ehrlich, as the previous architect? <laughs> My recommendation would be motion to approve with a proviso that the bedrooms are confirmed at seven foot six for a three family. And that there be no building code relief. And that there be no building code relief. That's correct. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, good luck. May I have the next, let's have the next Okay, cake. great. So uh, can I ask a question? So will I get a letter to proceed? Take, or? take, take this offline, okay? Okay. Um, okay. Call the Go ahead. Calling an next case, calling DOA 1153496, 59 Hillock Street. Let's combine two parcels, a total of 5,820 square feet to construct a two-family dwelling on the combined lot. Violation Article 67, Section 32, 33, the front modal alignment of, off the block, of the block. Article 66, Section 9, the lot area for additional units insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the lot area for additional unit is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the floor, floor data ratio is excessive. Article 67, Section 9, the height requirement is excessive. Article 67, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the minimum lot width is insufficient. And Article 67, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. I'm trying to look to see if anyone's on for this one. Um, let's see. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Can you state your name and address? Yes, hi. My name is Russ Forsberg. I'm here on behalf of Simone Barnett as the project representative. My address is 19 Fairview Avenue, Abington, Massachusetts. So uh, please, uh, Mr. Forsberg, tell us what's being proposed. Certainly, Madam Chairman. Uh, what we are looking at here is to create a lot by combining two properties that are presently vacant to create a lot total of 5,820 square feet. Um, on that, we are looking to construct a two-family dwelling. Um, the units themselves will be identical in terms of their size. They'll be 1,660 square feet each. They will contain three bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. On the upper uh, most level there, the half story, if you will, there will also be a roof deck of approximately 145 square feet provided for both units. Okay. Now, um... I'm having, um, Mr. Forsberg, um, I'm having a little bit of a conceptual problem with this because I do know, happen to know the property. It's not that far down the street from me. And I do know that it's a steep slope, but I also do know that, you know, that part of the street on that side of the street tends to be one families, one family. So I just don't know how this kind of fits in especially with that roof deck added on top of that because there is a change of grade between hillock and newburg and um i don't know what that does to the rear abutters well, again, uh, the district is a 2F5000 district, so the use is appropriate for the district in terms of its actual occupancy. Uh, you are absolutely correct in terms of the topography. It does slope from Hillock Street down towards the uh, rear uh, properties. However, um, the house itself, the design itself, looking at the elevations um, from Hillock Street, it would not be observed as it actually be somewhat more demure in terms of its overall height as compared to the abutting properties. Uh, the the uh, structure, as I said, is a two and a half story structure 
structure. So consequently to the rear of this property uh, or the rear portion of this proposed structure is the roof deck itself. So the perception or the um, or the view from the those properties in the back would be that of essentially a two a two story structure. So I don't believe it would be over imposing uh, to those uh, individuals uh, who uh, reside back there behind the properties behind it. Okay, because this is this is a lot of violations. How are the well, plans, yes. uh, Miss Better? The plans are adequate. Um, I did notice that the height was actually less than thirty five feet. Can you is that can you confirm that there is no height violation? Well, here's the thing. We were a bit surprised too because the actual design calls for the home to be 34, se 34 feet seven inches, which is approximately five inches below the height limitation. Um, so we can only presume that ISD uh, felt that with the um, change in topography and such, that they uh, made some sort of presumption that uh, that at some point uh, the structure would be at a height over, based upon average grade around the, the structure, over the 35 feet. Um, again, we're not looking to not uh, be granted relief because we're not sure what their rationale for citing that was. Also, I would like to point out in terms of the uh, floor area ratio that it's a total 410 square feet at which we are over the uh, approved standard. So it's not a considerable amount of relief that is sought at that particular point. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Yes. Madam Chair, er, er, it, the plans are adequate. And um, any questions from the board? <coughs> how, how is that? <coughs> How are those roof decks accessed? Uh, they're accessed directly from the uppermost portion of the structure through the uh, bedroom space themselves. So each unit, I'm sorry, each yeah, I'm sorry, each unit would have their own roof deck respectively, and it'll be accessed through what we could term um, the uppermost bedroom. Uh, that's how it'll be accessed. It's not by way of a hatch or by a headhouse or anything like that. It's simply walking out onto the uh, what it would formalize the uh, second floor roof, a flat roof, for instance. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Coppinger with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. The applicants have completed their community process. They were able to receive letters of support from the butters. Um, that being said, there was um, a little opposition in regards to the parking situation as well as the uh, the scale of the, the property to the lot. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair, Secretary, uh, we have four letters of support and five letters of opposition. Madam Chair, I do have a raised hand from Kim McCormick. Kim, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Kim McCormick, 60 Hillock Street. Okay, go ahead. Totally opposed to the idea. It's not conducive for the area. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I know that um, there was somebody else, uh, some other letters of opposition, but anyway, given that information, may I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve. With uh, BPDA design review? With BPDA design review. I'll second that motion. Um, can we also look to have it just uh, reduce slightly in size because the units there, the buildings on that side of the street tend to be pretty modest and these appear to be a lot of violations. So if through design review it could be just kind of look to meld in more with the community. Is there a second? I think, Madam Chair, I think the the violation is due to the siting of the building and the and the site location. Yes, yes, I know. Um, yeah, okay. Um, it's, yeah, it's an unusual shape lot, that's why. Yes, because but, it was kind of uh, pulled together. It's a, it's a corner that's a steep downhill um, and it's a steep uh, rear slope. It's a really awkward parcel. I mean, um, if, it was, if it was in a one family space, Zoning district, um, you know, I would consider that, but it is a two F five thousand. The FAR is not excessive. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not asking. I'm not. I guess I'm not asking that it be changed from the number of units, but that um, it be uh, modified a little bit to reduce the 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 violations. Okay. So, is there a second? 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1160394, 39 Dustin Street. This is to confirm occupancy as an existing two family, construct a new three story addition with decks, and change occupancy from a two family dwelling to a three family dwelling. The violations, Article 10, Section 1, limitation of area of accessory uses, Article 51, Section 8. Use of a three-family dwelling is forbidden. Article 51, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 51, Section 9, the building height number of stories is excessive. Article 51, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 51, Section 56, off street parking design and maneuverability. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, Mr. Secretary, I'm going to recuse myself in this matter. I. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair and members of the um, board, Mark Sanjolo, architect, nine sketch Conant Way in West Harwich, Mass. Also on the line, I believe, is um, Brian McGrath, who represents Glenfin Properties, the owner. Uh, what we're seeking to do is uh, to add to an existing single family home uh, in a 2F5000 district and try to uh, make it consistent with um, the character of the other houses on the street. It's a residential street. Dustin is a residential street that connects Cambridge Street with, um, I think it's... Is it so so I'm, trying, I'm trying to understand, is this a one family to a two family or a two family to a three family? Well, it's, it was, it's a one family, but it had an illegal uh, uh, second unit in it at one time, I believe. So you're, so basically you're trying to legalize it from a one family to a two family? No, we're trying to make it a three family out of it, Madam Chair. Um, okay, so can you talk us through all the units? Sure. Um, and their sizes, et cetera? Will do. It's uh, we're basically adding to the right and to the rear of the existing house. And the units, there are three, three bedroom units and they range in size from 1,220 square feet to 1,370 square feet. Okay, um, uh, how are the plans, Ms. Um, Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little, what am I looking at right now? Unit one. It says fourth unit. It's so can, uh, Colette, can you scroll up to the other two and can we see a, a, a view from the street or a rendering or a photo? or something that might have been included in the package to answer mr mr Ruggiero's question that square footage number is the total square gross square footage of the floor plate not the unit okay. size and, and now i see the kitchen i didn't see the kitchen. i see every other thing highlighted except for the kitchen so i just got really confused on where the kitchens were in these units sure and are these are these anticipated for rental or for condos I believe they're anticipated for rental, but I think Brian McGrath could probably speak to that if Brian's on the line. And who's the, and so are you proposing a dormer in there or is that already there? It's not already there. What we're trying, what we tried to do was uh, endeavor to make, even though we're up three floors, it's not two and a half story. It's really a three story building. We tried to make it look like it was two and a half stories. So we're building the third floor into the roof as much as we can with dormers and trying to keep the character of the existing neighborhood. The existing the existing street is uh, a mixture of ones, twos, and threes. This side of the street um, backs up to um, uh, uh, the um, sisters of um, Saint 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 so a nice, nice, big, nice big open space in the rear, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so let me just ask a couple of questions. Tell us about the decks and tell us about the parking. Okay. So uh, the parking, we have um, three spaces in tandem on the right side. Um, I know that there's a, a uh, they've been cited by ISD as um, for maneuverability. Um, I think you're finding that cars are getting smaller, et cetera. I like to get out in my car and actually see, measure stuff okay. off. And see okay. if Madam, so, Madam, Madam Chair, uh, yeah. just for the record, Mr. D'Amico has not seen the plans. I don't know if Ms. Barraza has seen them. I, I have seen them, but uh, what was missing was a site plot plan. Yeah, that's what Mr. D'Amico was saying. 
So it's and, hard to access the parking situation. Oh. And has this address 39 Dustin come to this board before? No, this is no matter. I'm sure this is the first time. Okay. Okay. Um, and tell us about those decks. Yes, sure. The um, there's a, 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 a deck off of each um, unit in the rear, and uh, the, the sizes are approximately, um, let me just get here, 14 by 6. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, we conducted a butters meeting on December 2nd, uh, where a variety of opinions were expressed by butters. Um, they went on to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association, where they received support. And uh, we also have one letter of opposition that I believe we forwarded to the board. I should have access to that. Good afternoon. This is Maura McCray from Councilor Breeden's office. We'd like to go on record as being in support of this project. Thank you. Um, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Well, Madam Chair, I think Annabella needs to be called on, and I think there. Oh yes, of course, uh, Annabella, are you on? Please put your name and address on the record. Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabelle Gomes from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. We'd like to go on record and support. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, and members of the board. Karen Foley would like to go uh, from Councilor Sabi George's office. Would like to go on record and support. Thank you. And I'm not sure if I know there was another resident who said she would be on, but I'm not sure if she is. If Jessica sees any hands raised, no, don't see any hands raised. Do you have the name? Maybe they don't know how to. Uh, it should be Jane, Jane McGuire. Okay, I don't see her. Maybe have a motion, please. Motion to. I have a motion to defer. For what reason, uh, Hansi? Um. Since we're missing a plot plan, I don't see how I can um, approve a project without understanding all the setbacks. Okay. And May, I also, a second? Yeah. May I have a second? I'll second that, Secretary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> the date, please? Yeah, Madam Chair, trying to get the date right now. Uh, we won't have a date till June 8th. At 12:30. Okay. In the meantime, uh, let me find out if the applicant, uh, if Kyle Smith, is ready to go, because I've been reminded of Mr. Ehrlich will need to. Madam be Chair, before we do that, can I call? It's 12:40 right now. Can I'm going to call the 12:30s and get deferrals and withdrawals out of the way? Okay, but I just want to just find out if Mr. Smith, right after these deferrals. If we can get him on, because before Mr. Ehrlich has to leave at one, okay. Go Madam Chair, on. we're ready to proceed, Madam Chair. Okay, so let's go through these deferrals, and then we'll hear from you, okay? All right, I'm going to call the 1230s for deferrals or withdrawals. That's the 1230 only. Yes, Mr. Ch Mr. Secretary. Address. Eric Address. 12 Rock Hill Road, 29 Rock Hill Road. Okay, thank you. For the record. Calling BOA 106 8506 12 Rock Hill Road. There is a companion case BOA 106 8509 29 Rock Hill Road. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. This is just a 51 Dobson Road. We're seeking a deferral this, of this matter at this time. Um, we need to go back and we need to um, make sure that ISD sends the plans to the BPDA for their recommendation. Okay, Mr. Mr. Uh, Counselor, um, this will likely be a last deferral then because uh, we are trying to dispose of as many cases as we can. So may I have a motion, please? Mr. Madam Chair, it's Jeff Hampton at the BPDA. Uh, just to echo what uh, Derek had said, um, we just haven't received, we support this uh, last deferral uh, because we are looking forward to, see, to looking at these plans. So we support this. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please. You'll have a date of June 8th at 1230. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Members of the board, have a good day. You too. 
Are there uh, any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1230? Yes. Uh, 31 Waybon Street, Roxbury, Massachusetts. Okay, two seconds here for the record calling BOA. There's two cases, case BOA, 1121088, 31 Waybon Street. And there's a companion case BOA, 1135948, 33 Waybon Street. Name and address for the record, please. Stephen Suda, 33 Waybon Street. And you're requesting a deferral? Yes, we were deferred on 126 uh, just to give more information to the community. And then I received notice from Mr. O'Connor last night that our plans examiner wasn't able to turn around uh, the plans of time. We got them in two weeks prior on the 14th. Okay. Thank you. So may I have a, a motion? motion for deferral? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The date, please. Madam Chair, they have a date of April 6th at 1230. So that's in um, next week, okay? Correct. Thank you, members. Of the any, other, any other deferrals or withdrawals? Madam Chair, I know that um, Bunker Hill, 229-231 Bunker Hill, with Mr. Mahoney is withdrawing. So I'm going to call it into the record. I know Mr. Mahoney was on early. I don't know if he's still on. Hello? Yeah, okay. I'm going to call in for the record, call, calling case BOA 104 8915 229 to 231 Bunker Hill Street. Name and address for the record, please. It's uh, Patrick Mahoney with a business address of 160 Federal Street. And we are withdrawing, uh, seeking a withdrawal on this application. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion for deferral, uh, Madam, uh, motion for denial without prejudice, please. Second. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. It's been a long. It's been a long day. A long morning. Thank you. Did we get this one way on? We did one on. Okay. So let's go back is William, to Madam Chair. Is William Street on because they are also being deferred? Uh, yes. Yeah. This is Joe Federico, um, Madam Chair. Hold on. Hold on. Let's just read into the record. Uh, for the record, case BOA 1131644, 97 William Street. There is a companion case, BOA 1116715, 99 William Street. Um, they're being deferred, so Madam Chair, I make a motion for deferral. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries the date. Madam Chair, they have a date of April 27th at 1230. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go back to case BOA 11446, I'm forced, 1146931, 3936 Washington Street. Name and address for the record, please. This is Rebecca Lee from Mince Levin, uh, One Financial Center. Hold on, Washington. Rebecca. I think we are back to Washington Street. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. So I we'll saw Commonwealth here. Avenue flat. Okay, so we are looking for Washington Street. We're looking for Kyle Smith. Uh, did Kyle just say he was ready? Yes, he did, Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, we can we can do Commonwealth Ave and then come back. No, he looks oh. he looks like he's here. Kyle, can you please put your name and address on the record? Yes, Madam Chair, sorry. I was just permitted uh, to unmute and uh, share screen. Uh, so Madam Chair, once again, Kyle Smith with KDS Law. This is address of 359 Newbury Street. Uh, thank you again for your time today and for allowing me to loop in with the prospective uh, client. Um, just to, I think, correctly restate your position, you're looking for the owner to either select to reduce the number of overall units or to reduce the number of bedrooms in the uh, proposed four residential units, correct? Correct. Um, after speaking with the client, I just wanted to uh, draw your attention to the uh, formally issued BRA uh, memorandum from June 3rd of 2013 uh, to Robert Shortsleeve which establishes the uh, BRA recommended minimum square footage for can I, one. Can I, have a, can I have a motion for deferral on this one, please? Uh, I'd like to get a, a review because the uh, BPDA mentioned that they had not had a chance to review this. Motion so to defer. 
Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries the date, please. The June 8th will be the date at 1230. Okay, we'll see you then. All right, thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 115-8216, 1515 to 1525 Commonwealth Avenue. This is erect a new building to contain 253 residential units, including eight artist live work units, related amenity spaces and parking garage. The violation of Article 29, Section 4, this is the GPOD applicability. Article, 6, Article 51, Section 8, artist live work use is forbidden. Article 51, Section 9, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, the floor to ratio is excessive. Article 51, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 51, Section 9, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 51, Section 9, the use of local space is insufficient. insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. It's somewhere down here. Can you mute no Porto Perez, please? Irish, Irish kid? Sure. Come back. Come Name and address for the record, please. Go, go ahead, Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Stephen Davis. I'm a co-president with the Davis Companies. We are, uh, our, our address is 125 High Street, uh, Boston Mass 02110. Uh, we are a uh, affiliate of the petitioner, Div 1515 Commonwealth LLC. With me today is our permanent consultant, uh, Paul Barrett, as well as uh, Ruthie Coleman from Rody Architects and our attorney, uh, Rebecca Lee from Mince Levin, over to whom I'll turn over the presentation now. I'm here uh, uh, following the presentation to answer any questions. Thank you very much for your time and your consideration. Uh, good afternoon, members of the commission. We're here, um, as you can see, on a number of fronts for variances required to build an approximately 245,000 square foot building, single building, uh, to contain 253 rental apartments and condominiums in, in an MF1 um, district, um, a portion of the site along the Commonwealth Avenue West Carriage Road is within the G-Pod, um, and uh, the uh, variations are shown on this chart. If we could leave this chart up there. Um, thank you. Uh, you can see <clears throat> the various counts on which we are looking for uh, zoning relief. Um, this project has been through a relatively extensive uh, community process, and I will let Ruthie Kuhlman from um, Rody Architects walk you through the project design and we're happy of course to answer any questions of the board. Thank you Rebecca. Madam Chair, members of the board, Ruthie Coleman with Rody Architects, 535 Albany Street. Colette, if you can scroll to the next slide, we have our overall site plan and the site design concept was inspired by the surrounding developments to create buildings within a park context with a priority of providing publicly accessible open space. So you can see here, um, the massing moves of this project are responsive to the dimensional requirements of the site. We have the rental component on the left and the condominium component on the right side of the plan. Um, so, so please tell us how many rentals and how many condos? Yes, so for the rental units, we have 151 units range of studios to two beds and i can give you the count yes, please give us the breakdown sure so we have 49 studio units at around 455 square feet we have 52 one bed units at 650 square feet we have 15 one bed plus units at 860 square feet 31 two beds at 975 square feet and four two bed pluses at 1150 square feet. Okay, and tell us about the condos. The condo is 102 units. We have 21 studios at 550 square feet. We have 21 beds at 705 square feet. We have 27 one bed pluses at 845 square feet. 21 two beds at 1040, seven two bed pluses at 1235, and six three bedroom units at 1400 square feet. 
Okay, um, I'm sorry. The, so tell us, um, I missed the count on the two beds. How many two beds and how many two bed plus? In the condo? There's yep. 21 two beds and seven two bed plus. Okay, um, okay. And um, tell us how parking is proposed to walk on the site? Yes. yes. Colette, if you can scroll down one more page um, to slide eight. Yes, perfect. So one of the components of this site is that it was historically a granite quarry. So there's a large change in topography across the site. So this is the level one floor plan that you can see here, where the center of the site in gray is above grade. Uh, whereas we're at level one on both the north and south edges of the site, the north edge drops off very far, um, 20 feet down. So the parking access is at one of the points where the site connects to the street level at level one. So you can see it with the condo lobby on the right and the rental lobby on the left. So all vehicular access comes in through this entry. We have loading bays with two truck spaces for the rental and one for the condo with direct connections to the building elevators, all concealed immediately within the entry. And then we have the, all the resident parking. We have 100 spaces approximately for the condominium located behind the condominium lobby. And then as you drive up, the parking slopes up over the ledge to level two, where we have approximately 60 spaces for the rental connected directly to the rental lobby. And is this going to be a lead building? LEED certified building? It is. We are looking to achieve LEED silver certifiable. And tell us about the artist live walk space. Yes, so you can see here on the left side of the plan surrounding the rental lobby, we have the artist live units um, running along the edge at grade at level one. And then we have a dedicated artist workspace which is connected off of the lobby, which will have space for the eight artist units to each have their own open dedicated workspace as well as communal sink and additional ventilation for activities that need to be enclosed outside of the artist's open workspace. And the units are, are they studios or one bedrooms? So we have one, one two bedroom unit, two one bedrooms and five studios. Okay and tell us about the affordability in this building. I will pass this over to Stephen Davis to respond to this question. Sure, happy to do so. So there is a total of 16% IDP uh, across both components of this project. Starting first just with the apartments, we have 17% on site for 25 total units. Um, there's a range of AMIs starting at the bottom at 50% and ranging up to 120. Um, and then on the condominium side, we have 14% on site uh, for 14 uh, condos there, um, those are split uh, half and half between 80% and 100% AMI. In addition, we um, made a $600,000 offsite contribution representing two additional units to fund a, uh, a project being redeveloped by the Alston uh, Brighton uh, CDC on Quint Street. Um, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a subsidized, yeah. it's a supportive housing project um, that, uh, that they're hoping to break ground on later this year. Okay, um, and there's no roof decks on this building, I assume? We have a variety of open space terraces um, that move throughout the building, starting with landscape space provided at level one and two, uh, and then terraces that are all directly accessible from inside the building um, at different levels throughout the rental and condominium. How are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, would go on record to support this proposal. Uh, it's gone through a robust community process overseen by the BPA. They've also worked closely with numbers in the agencies, such as the Disabilities Commission regarding the grade change, uh, Transportation Department, BPDA, and Boston Housing Authority. Um, we really appreciate their commitment to increase affordability, um, to bring home ownership opportunities to the Brighton area, as well as publicly accessible open spaces. So uh, we think this is a great project and we hope you'll consider it. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, this is Maura McCray from Councillor Breeden's office. We'd like to go on record as being in support of this project. We appreciate the proponent's um, proposal to include open space on site, their commitment to affordability, both on and off site, and their inclusion of artist studios on site. Thank you. Hi, Annabella, you can un unmute yourself. Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabelle Gomes from the Bright and Austin Improvement Association. We'd like to go on record in support. And uh, I also served as an IAG member on this project and uh, the IEG is very much in favor of the project moving forward. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Savi Georgie's office. We'd like to go on record and support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPVA to design review. A second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chair, I, I need to leave at this time. Thank you so much. See you next week. Thank you. Madam Chair, we're going to see if Kelly Logue is um, carrying. I'm sorry. I'm here. Yeah. Carrie, are you on? I am. Okay, excellent. Great to see you. I see you in a while. Well. Yeah. Carrie, we have a whole new team here, so you'll get to know them over time, but let's go on with our cases here. Okay. Calling the next case, calling VOA 1156531, 277 Bunker Hill Street. This is a build a roof deck on an existing structure and created access point via a stairway and master bedroom with hatch. The violations article 62, section eight, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Nicholas is on one second. Nicholas, you've been unmuted. Can you say the name and address? Yep, Nicholas Mandonis, property owner, 277 Bunker Hill Street. Uh, and my architect, Peter Lewandowski, is on as well. So please tell us what's being proposed. Essentially, um, in the existing structure, we would like to have a roof deck built on top of our existing roof um, with an access uh, with a staircase through our bedroom. That would be an access point with a roof hatch um, okay. to be Yep, to the to the back slope, uh, rear slope of our of our property. Um, okay. okay, hold on a minute. Uh, sure. Ms. Schneider, how are the plans? The plans are okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joe Coppinger with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record in support. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Nisa Wasabi George's office would like to go on the record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I would like to have to make a motion to approve with BPDA design review to look specifically at the setback of the roof to remove it from public view. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case. Calling BOA 115 54 Wyndham Road. This is a six by nine foot mud room would be added to the driveway side of the house, as well as a portico roof above the front door. The violations, Article 69, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient, and Article 69, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, John. You've been unmuted. Are you here for this case? Uh, yes, my name is John Kelly, uh, 54 Windham Road, um, owner. So tell us what you're proposing to do. Uh, I am proposing uh, a six by nine mudroom um, on the driveway side of the house and adding a portico roof to the front, front door, above the front door. Uh, Collect, do you have more in this package? Can you scroll down a little bit? Oh, excellent, thank you. How are the plans, Ms. Better? The plans are accurate. Okay. 
Um, having that mudroom does not uh, interfere at all with parking, does it? Hansi? No, it, it does not. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joe Carpenter with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. This is a, a modest addition to a house that will help improve the, uh, the home. Thank you. You got to read this one here. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hand. Can I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve. It is a very modest addition. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Aye. Calling the next two cases. Miss Ambassador, can you mute everybody, please? Uh, but to Mr. Connors. Um, Calling the next two cases. I think it's Mr. Perez. There we go. Calling the next two cases. Calling BOA 115 the Ponset Avenue. There's a companion case BOA 115 the Ponset Avenue. This is for 119, this erect a new single family home. The violations Article 69, Section 9, insufficient lot width. Article 69, Section 9, insufficient front yard setback. Article 69, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback. Article 69, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded. This is for 121 deposit, erect a new single family home. Violations Article 10, Section 1, a limitation of parking area. Article 69, Section 9, insufficient lot size. Article 69, Section 9, insufficient lot width. Article 69, Section 9, insufficient lot frontage. Article 69, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 69, Section 9, the number of allowed habitable stories has been exceeded. And Article 69, Section 9, insufficient front yard setback model. Name and address for the record, please. Is the caller on for for this project? Hi, this is Eileen Rosa. I am the general contractor for this project. Um, the attorney Joseph should be on the call. Okay. Is it Joseph? Uh, Joseph. Uh, Joseph. 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 Mr. Feaster, are you the uh, attorney for this? Yes, yes, okay. I, for some reason, I went back onto mute for some reason. I apologize, Madam Chair. As I had indicated, I wanted them to unmute Timothy Fraser. Eileen uh, Rosa is the person who's going to do the presentation of the plans. And the owners of the property are uh, Agapito Feliciano, uh, Dattu, and their consultant, uh, Doug Cardinelli. But the persons presenting today were Mr. Frazier, Attorney Frazier, and Ms. Rosen. So thank you. Thank you very much. So can um, can somebody tell is this is this a subdivision? And if so, please can you talk us through it, Mr. Frazier? Uh, yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Um, this is the proposal to erect a two-family home on a two combined lots. Um, Back in 2017, this was one combined lot of 18,000 square feet. Um, it appears that it was uh, a permit was issued for having it subdivided. So this proposal actually just builds a new single family home on the utilizing okay. both lots. Okay, and so what, what are the lot sizes for each lot? Uh, one lot is approximately 11,000 square feet, 11,500. The other is 6,800 roughly. So the combined lot um, is 18,000. Okay, and these are both single family homes. Um, how are the plans, Ms. Um, better? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody That's here to, go ahead, was there a question? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Coppinger here with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. Um, we believe that the 
erection of single family homes is going to be good for the neighborhood. Uh, throughout the community process, we did hear concerns about the tree canopy on the property. Uh, so we just ask that the development team continue to work on uh, preserving as many natural trees as possible. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have one letter of opposition. And Madam Chair, I see no additional raised hands. Okay. Um, Ms. Better, is there any occupancy in the basement? No, it's currently at um, storage, mechanical systems. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve with BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Good luck. Calling the next case, calling BOA 116-3324, 235 to 259 Independence Drive. This is a change of office from 13 apartments to 13 apartments with real estate leasing office and install a new walkway awning. The violation is Article 56, Section 7. Use of office is forbidden. Article 56, Section 8, the front yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Is there anybody here for Chestnut Hill Realty? There you go. It looks like Andy. Um, let me make up a panelist. Oh, Andy, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Andy Martineau uh, for Chestnut Hill Realty, 300 Independence Drive. Um, thank you very much for taking the time this afternoon to meet with me. Um, so our regular leasing offices are located directly across the street from this unit at 300 Independence Drive. Um, we have a number of ongoing construction projects on the Brookline side of Hancock Village, including a new community center, which will be the future home of our leasing offices for Hancock Village. Uh, so given the impacts of the construction, what we did is temporarily convert our leasing offices at 300 Independence Drive into additional amenity space for those residents that are uh, and be, uh, a quiet place to have a meeting or just to escape some of the construction during the daytime hours. Um, and in order to maintain some leasing offices at the property, uh, we'd like to temporarily convert uh, the unit that's immediately across Independence Drive uh, adjacent to the Harvard Vanguard Medical Office uh, into leasing offices on a temporary basis, uh, getting at this awning sign that you see before you um, while the community center is uh, constructed. So, so this is the unit right abutting uh, Harvard Vanguard. It's that first unit there. Correct. Yep. So okay. one of the issues, one of the issues that we have related to visibility is it's very easy to miss. And so, for those folks that are coming to visit the property, um, they often miss the leasing offices and have a hard time identifying. But the awning sign is intended to address that issue in particular. Uh, and it is handicapped accessible. Yep. There's a okay. walkway. Um, Ms. Better, how are the plans? The plans are okay. Um, I have a, a question for you. you. You're asking for an added use of uh, an office. Do you have drawings of that? Of uh, the interior office layout? Correct. Correct. No, no, I do not. Not with me today. No. Okay. And how long, how long do you perceive that temporary is going to be? Uh, it would be a year to 14 months. Uh, we're starting construction on the community center next month. It's approximately a 12 to 14 month construction period. So call it 14 months for a little bit of a buffer, 14 to 16 months. Okay, so so you're committing to us that this is temporary, not and that it'll go back to a residential unit when all is said and done. Absolutely, yeah. We, we very much would rather these be residential units so we can get the income and our leasing staff are anxious to get into their new space, so. Madam, okay. Madam Chair, can we put a proviso on it, like a two-year yeah. contest? But okay. let me just hear, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jack Duggan, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Just like to go on record support. Uh, the applicant went before the West Rockford Neighborhood Council back in January and received their full support. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, this is Peter Favorito from Boston City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. The councilor would, like would also like to go on record and support. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Council Wasabi, George's office, and would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. Um, is, um, may I have a motion, please? I'd like I'll to make, make a, motion. a motion to defer. Um, can we just, uh, this is, a, this is a minor, this is, yeah, this is a minor, um, a minor project. Uh, so can we just have it, um, just have a, uh, you know, we, we can wait for the plans, but just to prove I it actually, now. Well, so BPDA is pretty, um, has very specific guidelines for signage in terms of its projection from the building. And so mm -hmm. I, I just would like to know whether there was conversation with, with BPDA because one can make the argument that this is a large signage. I see. I'm with Ms. Uh, Barraza. I would, I would make a motion for deferral of her. Um, Mr. Hampton? Yeah, if, any, any, if anybody had any conversations, it wasn't with me. And so uh, I agree with Ms. Better the, about the, uh, the signage coming out that far. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so can we do uh, approval with design? Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to think of this as a temporary project for 18 months. Um, if so if we can rely on the BPDA um, to cut back on the signage to make it work. Then that's that acceptable. Help? Okay, may I have a so second? I Go ahead, Joe. Oh, do we have a motion or do you need a motion? I need a motion, please. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve um, with BPDA design review um, on the, the, the length of the awning um, and a proviso that this is only for a two-year time period. Um, and also the sizing of the signage. Okay, is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? motion carry so also just for the record this is also one of those cases where we received no information from isd yes it's tough being in two different buildings in COVID times <laughs> calling the next two, calling the next two cases calling boa 1019225 16 cottage street there is a companion case boa 1019227 18 Cottage Street. This is for 16. This is to add a rear addition, a four story addition, and a roof deck. The violation is Article 27T 5. This is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded. Article 53, Section 9, the maximum allowed height has been exceeded. Article 53, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 53, Section 9, a sufficient rear yard setback. Article 53, Section 52. Roof structure restrictions. Uh, and this is for 18 Cottage Street. This is seeking to add a rear addition, a fourth story addition, and also a roof deck. We have the same. Yes, 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 yes. Mr. Perez, please. Perez, please. Same. We have the same violations as the uh, as uh, 16 Cottage Street. So name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago uh, with Drago in Toscano with an address <clears throat> of 11 Beacon Street. Uh, with me um, on behalf of the applicant, uh, Noberto Perez of 16 Cottage Street. I also have Matt Eckel from my office as co-counsel on the project and Arthur Chu, who is the architect. Um, just to point out the description of the project has changed. Um, and Ms. Better has the reflected plans or should have the reflected plans for both 16 and 18 Cottage. Um, we removed the third floor addition, the roof deck and head house. So the proposal is now seeking to erect fourth story additions only at 16 and 18 Cottage Street, which should be reflected. So, I'm sorry, so there's no rear addition, there's just the fourth story addition and, That's there's, correct. No roof, and there's no roof deck. Correct on both, yes, okay. and that's for both buildings. Okay, uh, um, so, and what's the occupancy of this building, each building? The, the, there are existing three-unit buildings, and they will remain as three-unit buildings. The uh, 
the top floor units as they exist right now um, are about 535 square feet. So we're proposing to add about 470 five square feet on that fourth floor. So those would become duplex units, giving a little bit of extra room. And I can go through the floor plan, Madam Chair. And, yeah. No, I, and um, are there, is there any occupancy in the basement? There is not, so the- uh, Okay, so these are duplex yeah. units, each will be about a thousand square feet. Okay, um, Ms. Better, how are the plans? Um, adequate, Madam Chair. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of these proposals? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, this proposal went through an extensive community process when the applicant uh, addressed many of the concerns of the abutters. They eliminated the roof decks, the head houses, the third story rear addition, and shipped back the four proposed uh, um, first story addition. We recognize there are still concerns regarding the height of the building and the design of the building. However, after all the modification made based on the request of the abutters, we would like to go on the record in support with the PDA design review, and we will also recommend the applicant to continue working with the abutters. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would like to leave this proposal at the discretion of the board. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have numerous letters of opposition and numerous, le and numerous letters of support. Madam Chair, do you have two um, raised hands? Okay. Yep. Shane, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Hello. Uh, my name is Shane Prebenda. I reside at 18 Cottage Street. Um, and are you, so you live in one of the units, so likely you're in support, okay? Um, may I hear from somebody else, please? Sure. Okay. Uh, call at 30, um, 857, you've been unmuted. Good afternoon. You couldn't say that you wasn't. Hi. Hi, would you like to speak? Okay, I think they're all set. They took their hand down. I see Sharon Daly and Ronald Stoyer. Oh, come on. Okay, got it. All right, Ron, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Um, my name is Ron Stoyer. I'm at 183 Webster Street. Um, I'm in opposition to this project. Um, the, this uh, new landscape is going to ruin a very, very beautiful section of Cottage Street. Um, it's And it's just another trend of slapping a um, another fourth floor on top of the traditional three-decker. Um, the the board voted against the JPNA vote, voted against the proposal um, 27 to uh, to um, 20 excuse me 29 to 7 voted against it. Um, it's just just probably another a segue later on to put on another a full fourth floor, which is exactly what was proposed at the beginning. Um, anything to get your foot in the door. Um, this really is going to ruin the uh, the atmosphere of that particular neighborhood, and that's why so many people in Jeffrey's Point are opposed to it. Thank you. And Sharon Daly, you've been unmuted. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Daly. I'm a directed butter at 117 Webster Street. I'd like to go on the record saying that I oppose these projects. I reviewed the revised plans, and although they no longer include that third floor rear extension, which obstructed our view of Boston Harbor and Skyline. I am still very concerned about the overall building height and the revised massing. They're too tall and out of scale with the surrounding neighborhood on Lower Cottage Street. I submitted a letter to the board, um, which should be in your file, and there is a attachment showing a rendering uh, of the streetscape and how out of scale um, it, the building will be with the surrounding uh, buildings on Cottage Street that uh, Mr. Stoya uh, mentioned. So if you would like to look at that, I welcome you to do that. Um, although, you know, this revision, you know, addresses one of our concerns as direct abutters, it does nothing to address the many concerns of the community 
And I also submitted a petition with 96 signatures opposing um, the plans back in October on the grounds that the building height and the revised mass are on the grounds that the building height and the massing are too tall and out of scale with the rest of the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Ambassador, is Mr. Christopher, Tom Christopher, also uh, going to speak? Yes. yes, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Madam Chairwoman, Chairwoman and members of the board. My name is Tom Christopherson of 38 Everett Street in East Boston. I'm here representing the Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association. Our uh, organization voted against this project with a vote of seven in favor, 29 opposed. Uh, the reasons residents gave for the opposing project were the following. Uh, residents objected to the height of the building. Residents objected to the increase in the floor area ratio and density. And the butters objected to the size and the massing of the additions, which will intrude upon their views of the Boston Harbor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so given that information, um, Council, did you have anything to say? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so just a couple of points. So when we started this process, we actually worked directly with the abutters, two of which just spoke, to redesign this project. They actually were part of the design team who put that together. So we cut back that third floor. That was their issue. Um, all this fourth floor does is give a little bit of extra space to my client who lives on that third floor. Um, I also want to point out at 106, 109, 111, and 36 Cottage Street, those are all four-story buildings. So, uh, hold on, hold on, Councillor. So, um, okay, so you basically you stated that you've done your due diligence listening, uh, listening to the abutters the, who have specifically spoken. Okay, thank you. Um, may I have a motion, please? I like I'll to make, make a, I'll make a motion to approve a BPDA design review. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Um, Hans, uh, Ms. Betty, you're opposed. Motion yes. carries. Thank you, Hans. Calling the last case of the day, calling VOA 1038178, 30 to 36 Battery March Street. This is a change of occupancy from commercial spaces and 26 residential units to commercial spaces and 26 executive suites. This is just also to complete interior innovations. This would be stores, restaurant, 36A, medical office, 26 executive suites and restaurant, and renovations to unit 5A. The violations, Article 45, Section 14, the use is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Dano, uh, with an address of 11 Beacon Street, here on behalf of Saunder, uh, who is the applicant. I also have Dan Artigas from Embark, who is the architect on the proposal. As was mentioned, we are seeking to change the occupancy at 30-36 Battery March, also known as 153 Milk Street. Um, from commercial space, which includes restaurant and retail, and 26 residential units to commercial space and 26 executive suites, also to make one of those units, Unit 5A, uh, accessible. Uh, just point of reference, this is located um, within a commercial district, government center, uh, zoning district. We are in the heart of the financial district and surrounded by commercial uses all around us. Um, currently, these units, well, prior to us uh, applying, had been used for a shorter term stay before the ordinance. Um, so we believe it is fitting for this area if there was going to be allowed for an executive suite type use to have it in this type of an area. The executive oh. suite, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. So tell us um, your history. I think I may have asked you this the last time you were before. Uh, what is the average occupancy period? So um, on average, it's a four day period, the majority. So almost 35% of these are business days. Uh, for, so for traveling folks for business, but in many cases, they also bring their families and what these suites allow, because they would be two bedroom, one bedroom and a few studios is to have that option to be able to work, have your family have a living room area, a kitchen room area and an area to cook your own food as well. Okay. 
How are the plans, uh, Ms. Better? The plans are ad adequate. Any questions from the board? Is yeah, Ms. Mr. Drago, I have a couple of questions, um, Madam Chair. Mr. Dr uh, Attorney Drago, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, the, the 26 uh, residential units uh, that are currently in existence there, what is the condition of them and what, how are they being presently used? So, so prior, prior to this use, uh, they were uh, being used for shorter term rental. They've been for years. Um, they're in decent condition, so they do need updating. Um, but once the ordinance uh, came into place, uh, Sonder was no longer leasing these units out or, or something. Is your client planning on having full-time staff um, that monitors this, this property? Yes, uh, so we have full-time 24-hour concierge. We have our Boston GM, Greg Klein, and his staff that are on call. We also have security patrol, noise monitors, uh, emergency numbers for them to reach. So it is a 24-hour operation. Sonder is one of the largest hospitality companies in the world. They are involved in eight different countries and through most states. We also have um, cleaning staff um, that come every day. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, uh, Councillor. Any other questions? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody Mr. here? Chair, and members of the board, this is John Romano from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. We've received support letters from abutters as well as from the Wharf District Council in St. Francis House for this project. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have letters of support. We also have letters of opposition. Madam Chair, I just yes. have a raised hand from Sharon Daly. Are you, are you looking to speak on this proposal, Sharon? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Can you state your name and address, please? Yeah. Okay, can you he state spoke your name? Oh. Never mind. I, she may not be for this case. Uh, Madam Chair, can I, uh, Anna from Councillor Flink's office, I would like to speak in opposition. Yes, please go ahead. Madam Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office, the councillor would like to go on record in opposition as Councillor Flink and Councillor Buck filed a joint opposition letter with the board as it is the position this proposal sounds contrary to the spirit of the short-term rental ordinance. Councillor Flynn voted for the short-term rental ordinance to add corporate investors and non-owner occupied units to protect our housing stock and from the impact investors unit had on the market. Moreover, we witnessed for several years the quality of life issues that ensued due to the fact of regulated hotels with absentee landlords, tra trash removals, parking issues, loud parties, in the final analysis, it is Councillor Flynn's position that allowing large companies to convert to executive suites will run contrary to the ordinance and will not protect the city's housing stock in the midst of an affordable housing crisis. Thank you. Anybody else? I see there are a lot of people on the line. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, Karen Foley, good afternoon, Councilor Sabi. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> sorry, it's a long day. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi, George's office, would like to echo the sentiments of uh, Councilor Flynn and uh, oppose this project. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Hi, my name is Lauren Brody uh, from Councillor Bach's office. Councillor Bach would like to go on record in opposition, and she wrote a joint letter with Councillor Flynn, as Anna said earlier. Thank you. Okay, so both councillors are in opposition. The mayor's office is in support. Wolf Council is in support. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Um, please cost the go ahead because you are you have been on this conversation in the past. Madam Chair, I'm going to move um, to approve subject to the following provisos 
No more than two occupants can occupy any of the uh, executive suites at any given time. Um, uh, rental periods must be for a minimum period of four days. Um, the applicant must have on staff, uh, excuse me, staff uh, located on site at the property uh, at all times. And finally, the applicant needs to have clear instructions in the lobby uh, or the entrance of the building to provide um, the community with access to um, telephone, access to management 24 hours a day. Okay, now this is going to be, I'm, uh, this is just we, as a discussion for the board, we just need to figure out, um, Mr. Ligris, how this is going to be uh, monitored. Because some things that are even more obvious than um, no more than two people in a room or something is just, um, is hard. So I just need to figure out, uh, because both city councilors were in opposition, so we just need to figure out if this is enough protection for the community. Um, so, uh, you know, just trying to kind of think this through because um, it's going to be hard to monitor. I think it's easy to monitor about the 24 hour staff, um, the instructions that's clear to monitor. The thing that's going to be more difficult is the minimum of four days and the uh, occupancy per unit. Any thoughts, anybody else or, or, or Mr. Ligris? We could ask the applicant to um, voluntarily uh, obtain an STR number with ISD. Um, so if I may, Ms. Ligris, if it's okay to speak. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. So, so they actually have a ERT number if you're approved for executive suite separate from the short term number for a short term rental. Um, so we would apply for an ERT number that would be in the record. Um, I, I could also uh, come back to the board if that would please the board to see like in a year if that would make sense to see how some of these provisos are working. I know the board has done that, Madam Chair, in the past. I don't know if that's something the board might want to entertain. But yeah, thank you, Attorney Bingo. Madam Chair, the, the purpose behind having um, on-site uh, staff is to monitor the number of occupants. The, the, the staff and the and the clear instructions, I'm perfectly fine with. I think that's easy. The part that's more difficult is um, the the occupancy for four, a minimum of four days and uh, no more than you said two people per room or something i think that's more difficult to monitor well so yeah i would not support this absent uh a full-time staff member at the property but i think given the size of 26 units to be able to monitor the the period of stay based on the check-in and the checkout um uh, of the uh of their customers and the number of occupants that are coming in is something that an on-site person in my opinion, um, could monitor for 26 units. Anything larger than that, obviously, the larger uh, the number of units, the more uh, the, the more unlikely it is that they could actually have a handle on it. That was my thought around that. But I'm open to suggestions from other boards. Okay, members. so let's, how about this, that uh, regardless, we want staff on site at all times. Second item, um, clear instructions for 24 hour issues, okay? Third item is a report in one year um, on the number of people per room and the minimum um, and, and the range of occupancy. Does that work for you, Mr. Ligris? That works for me. Okay, so those are the three items as provisos. Okay, is there- Madam Chair, it's Jeff Hampton at the BPDA. Yeah. yeah. Could we add to this applicant only? And this yes, only. this applicant only. I, I'm, I'm in support of that. Thank you, Mr. Hampton. Thank so, you. So, so those are four provisos. Um, is there a second? I'll to second vote? that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I oppose. And you're opposed, Miss Miss Better. Okay. Uh, motion carries. Thank uh, you. Can we just have five minutes? I'd like you, uh, Carrie, to meet everybody. Uh, because I think we haven't seen Carrie in a while.
Okay. Madam Chair, do you want to adjourn the meeting? Meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. See you next week. <laughs>